one. Ladies and gentlemen, gather close tonight. Get ready for a tight shot. Let's enjoy a bloody Valentine. I've been an evil man for so long, and there's no turning back. I don't know much about salvation, but my sins are too great to be forgiven. If you're in a job, it's my last job. Last one, and I'm done. For the last ride. For the last ride. Who's the target? He's the kingpin, a dangerous man. Drugs, illegal fighting, human trafficking. You name it. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> the prodigal son returns home. I need you to help you find someone. Sometimes you cannot win. That doesn't wait for anybody. He's not an easy man to kill. <laughs> this isn't a job anymore. It's turned into a war. There are three types of man. Ordinary man, fearful. Brave man, fighter. And lastly, a man so determined he will grace his highlights. This is gonna be my grand finale. How many of you wanna die tonight? I have always, I have all, I have always believed the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. I gotta bend all the way over here. Please make your voice be heard. And I'm leaving society to move out to the country as most crystal men with rednecks. Maybe you have a differing opinion than us. Maybe we're completely wrong, and you are the one lone person in the world that is right. That's why you're here tonight. Eventually, me and Dave Jarvis are going to Hollywood. But guess what? Some of us are actually pretty friendly. Yeah, but most of us are fine upstanding young man. Fine upstanding young man. <laughs> the, uh, smoke weed. All right, everybody, on panel tonight, we have the producer and director of Hellhound 2024, the movie. Everybody can participate tonight in the chats, so load up in the chats, and any questions you ask, we'll try to get them in to Joshua Dixon tonight. Also on the panel, we have Ariel. We have our other host, Dave Jarvis, guiding us through the chaos. Yeah. Ha! How is everybody tonight? It's Wednesday. <laughs> That's what all I'm going to say. Well, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the Super Bowl. Uh, apparently, it had higher ratings than the moon landing back in 1969. So, right That's on. Funny. Go ta go Taylor. <laughs> T Team Swifty. <laughs> no, the football actually mattered. Just Taylor. Oh, dude, she has bumped NFL to its highest, like he just said. I mean, everybody's watching, or all the ladies are watching for Team Swifty. Alicia Keys was looking pretty hot in that halftime show with that lead guitar. Oh, man, they did great. 
I haven't seen Alicia. Well, actually, it was, her, it, was, it was her with the guitar, and I don't believe she was uh, playing that guitar, sadly. But I'm pretty sure Alicia Keys was playing that piano. Oh, she wasn't the one playing the guitar? No, no that was her, H-E-R. Uh, her? All right, fair enough. Yeah. Well, uh, Joshua Dixon, did you? Uh, you're in Bangkok, Thailand tonight. Is that correct? Yeah, it's morning here, so correct. <laughs> How early morning is it? Uh, it's nine a.m. right now. Okay. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Sorry well, about I have to ask: Is the Super Bowl a player in Thailand? Yeah, I mean, I hang out with tons of expats and 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 you know other foreigners here, so. Everybody watches it, so people are going to hate me. But I don't watch the Super Bowl. I'm I'm not really a football fan. I watch <laughs> yeah, right. baseball and hockey. I'm baseball and hockey man. So, hockey. Um, well, is Team yeah. Swifty alive and well in Thailand? Then, oh, everybody knows all about that. I don't yeah. think you can escape that. Isn't that yeah. crazy? It's it's nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> At this point, I'm sure they have a business arrangement. Oh, are sure. there a lot of Usher fans over there? Um, yeah, of course. He's super well known here as well so yeah yeah i never knew that he could sing and rollerblade at the same time that's fascinating <laughs> i think i think actually, actually roller, roller skate. skate yeah, yeah. there he goes roller <laughs> skates it wasn't that cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i heard uh, a dj on the radio say well at his age it's cool <laughs> yeah i'll give you that <laughs> that's pushing it all right, and so what about the holidays? Are you uh, celebrating Valentine's today or yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday for us. So we just, uh, yeah, just finished it. Um, nothing too exciting. My wife and I went out to dinner a couple nights ago, um, I guess kind of to avoid the whole, you know, Valentine's rush sort of thing out there. But um, yeah, man, it was good. Got Had a good time. chocolate covered strawberries in early. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I had some chocolate covered uh, raspberries yesterday. That, All right. Uh, yeah. Hershey's is Hershey's brand in the freezer section. Chocolate covered raspberries. I've never seen them before. I was like, yeah, I'll try those. <laughs> right on. What, what's the chocolate situation in Thailand? There's a lot of it. A lot of it. <laughs> Thais love sugar, man. They put sugar in everything. So chocolate's oh. massive out here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, man, cannot thank you enough for joining us tonight. Joshua Dixon, producer and director of the movie Hellhound. I I had the opportunity to watch it last night. Like I said, I've been busy working, so uh, I did watch it last night and, you know, gave it my undivided attention, and it was awesome, amazing. Uh, my challenge with asking you questions tonight is going to be the spoiler aspect. I don't want to spoil no it worries, for anyone. No worries, no worries. Do it, do it. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, before we get started, though, I want to ask you, you know, about the origins because you are from Fort Worth. We're in the Dallas, yeah, Fort Worth, Arlington area, and most of our yeah. viewers are in this area. We do have viewers around the world, but most of them are right here. So go ahead and kind of say hi to your friends here in Fort Worth. And uh, anyone who doesn't already know, Kind of tell us, how did you get from uh, playing in a band and yeah. and helping bands here in Fort Worth to Bangkok, Thailand and producing and directing this movie? Wow. So we go way back. I I, I, I totally forgotten how far back you and I go. Um, Thank so you. it's good to be back <laughs> virtually. Um, and uh, yeah, man, that's crazy. I actually forgot about it. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah, you were actually you and I were there at the beginning when I really was starting to just get into video and film and that sort of thing back in the day. Um, we shot some music videos together. So that's pretty, you know, that's a memorable time in my life when, you know, there was zero budget, zero dollar budgets at the time. And um, yeah, it was cool, man. So like we we have been through the trenches together, I guess is a good way to way to put it. So yeah. Um, getting to bangkok is a whole super long story the condensed version is basically um i got a job on a on a film set in cambodia um they flew me out uh during that time i had a bit of a vacation period that i was able to go to bangkok and saw that there was a whole industry out here for commercials um so I thought it was a good opportunity and really kind of just 
invested my own time and money into creating a commercial production company. That's um, and it just, it grew, it grew from there. Um, and so, yeah, so it was, it's, it's a, a boring journey, but where I'm at now, it's becoming exciting. So, um, you know, the whole goal was to get into directing and producing feature films later on in life. And, and I've managed to check that box now. So, uh, you know, we're just going to try to keep doing that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm still curious as to how it happens, man. How does a boy from mm -hmm. Fort Worth end up in Bangkok, Thailand? And I know you, that you've had to answer yeah. this question a couple of times in other interviews. And yeah, I do yeah. want to make this interview different and, uh, cool. than some of the others. But I, I am very curious, and I know our listeners will be too, you know, how do you end up in Bangkok, Thailand? That's crazy. Um, well, like I said, I mean, I, I, I came over here on vacation, right? Mm -hmm. I saw the opportunity and I literally picked up and left, right? There was about a year and a half period where I was back and forth. Um, and, and I just did it, man. It was a, it was a crazy move. I think I was just um, bored where I was at um, in, in the U S and it just really motivated me to, to move over here. Um, during that process, I met my wife. So that obviously made it a lot easier. She's yeah. Thai. Um, and so, you know, having my wife here is, you know, makes it a lot easier to leave everything that I had, you know, back in the U S. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there wasn't like a special, like I got hired by a company and they moved me out here. You know, there's no story like that. Like I just did it, man. Um, I, I moved out here. I, I started the company. Uh, I'm, I'm really an entrepreneur as well at heart. And so like it was kind of the whole spirit of the thing is very, very enticing to me. Uh, yeah. So I just kind of, you know, latched onto that. Um, and I mean, we've we've had a great company where, you know, we've got about 40 people full time that work at the at the company now. Um, and so like it's it's just grown in scale and, and it's, it's been you know, I've been very fortunate. and It's been successful. Um, there's a lot of people that moved here and, and just, you know, it didn't work out. Um, yeah. it's a different culture, different language. It's just, you know, difficult. So, um, well, what was it about yeah. Thailand that made sense to you? I guess that's kind of, yeah. Was there, so, was there a, was there an epiphany moment that made it all make sense? Yep, there was. So, um, I was, anyone who, who has ever been to Bangkok actually knows truly what, Bangkok is like, and that is, it's a massive, massive city that is, it has like its roots and its uh, authentic, you know, tie to it, right? Where temples and, um, you know, the, you know, street food and that sort of thing that Thailand's known for. But then it's also this massive, massive uh, area or city that has tons of shopping malls, high end cars, like, it's, it's like Manhattan in a way, right? So, and it's yeah. bigger than Manhattan. Um, it's probably about a third size, you know, 30% 30, 30 bigger than Manhattan is in terms of population and area. Um, and so it's just massive, man. Like there's fantastic transportation, trains and whatnot, subway and, and all of that. So like it's when, when I was in Bangkok and that's just like setting the scene as to what Thai or Bangkok is really, right? Yes. Um, when I was in Bangkok, I was on one of the train flat platforms just in the middle of travel, standing outside of a mall here. Um, it's called Siam Paragon. Everyone that's been to Bangkok knows this because it's a huge shopping destination. Got it's it. a luxury shopping mall. Um, and on there was this digital media billboard that was on several different faces of the mall. Right. So like the left, the front and and another face that was jutted out in some weird architectural way. Like those um, 3D billboards that we see exactly. in New York City. It's it was just like that. And and that and I was and I saw it and I was like, this is crazy. Thailand has more media than Dallas, Texas. It has more media than you know 90% of the cities in in America. Um, it's just extremely advanced in that way. And I at that point realized, hey, there's got to be a huge commercial market here for film and video. Um, and that's, that's really like when it clicked. Um, and that's, you know, that's a memory I'll always remember as a time where I was like, this is just a massive opportunity here because there's gotta be, uh, outside production that's needing to come to Thailand. So like we service basically outside production coming into Thailand, majority of that. So films that are shooting in Thailand. So we're kind of the link between Thailand and outside film. 
So that's well, and a lot know. of that has moved away from Hollywood. Has exactly. a, a majority or a good percent of it moved to Thailand? Is that what's happening? A massive percentage has. Um, so Alien is shooting here right now, the TV series. Wow. Oh, so, wow. And they're only shooting here because of the cost and the studios that are available, right? They're not shooting on location. Um, so the TV series is shooting in uh, in a studio, right? They're building all the sets inside. Um, and they're shooting here because it's affordable. They get, you know, government, the government gives them tax rebates, so they get money back. Um, so Thailand's become a huge, huge film and des filming destination. White Lotus uh, just started shooting here as well. Uh, I think last week, I got a bunch of friends on that. Wow. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's massive, man. It's really like the new destination. Like you said, you know, people are moving out of Hollywood. It's super expensive. Um, and so now this is, you know, you can get more bang for your buck essentially. And so that's kind of like where we're, we're stepping in. Do you think if more people move out that direction, it'll kind of shift to a more expensive route like Hollywood? Because I feel like there's a cycle of things. Yeah, sure. I mean, there is a cycle of things. I, I agree with that. Like you can you can look around the U.S. and see where production has gone. Right. First, it went to New Mexico. Then it went to Louisiana. Then it went to Atlanta. But this is always like based on tax rebate the government's given them and a bunch of boring, you know, paperwork stuff that the accountings and CEOs and executives love. Um, so, but like in terms of like destination, I think everyone always wants to come to Thailand. Um, it's, it's, it's that, that's like the cherry on the top. So, so not only do we like have an affordable, like place and solution for all the suits, you know, to be cool with everything, but we also have like a destination where the film stars want to come, the directors and producers, they want to come and go, you know, on vacation. And, um, I mean, Thailand's awesome, man. It's exotic and it's lots of fun. It's totally different than, you know, what everyone on our side of the world was raised in. So um, yeah. it's kind of like you're living in this permanent, like, TV series or something, you know, this mm -hmm. has been different. So, yeah, it's cool. It's it's great. That's bold. I, I had, don't have a gypsy soul. I don't know if I can move into another country. Yeah, D hard for me. Dakota Johnson was just on IndieWire talking about how uh, bleak it is to make a movie in Hollywood right now. Yeah. Uh, Apparently they used sense. to greenlight all kinds of stuff for Netflix and whatnot, and that's pretty much dried up. Uh, is yeah. it cheaper to film over Consider across but, across yeah. the pond? Yeah, exactly. It's um, it's it's literally probably a third of the cost that, that, that it that it is in the U.S. Jeez. So yeah, it's it's considerably cheaper. Let's go make a movie, babe. All right. So you saw the opportunities there and how the technology was there already. Uh, take us through the steps of how you got started and what you've been involved in and how it's led to this, your first big movie, uh, independent movie production and direction. Yeah. So like take, take you through the steps of, of, of the feature of the film itself. Yeah. How did you get from point A of moving over there yeah. and doing smaller projects to making a movie? I mean, people probably think that some big investor came along and, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. doled out the cash. But the yeah, story that, is probably not the quite case. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's very much the opposite of that. So, um, I mean, we did have some people invest some money in the movie for sure. But in the end, um, it, it, there was a lot of our own money that we just put into it um, because we believed in it. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but I would say that um, I, I I managed to do something that a lot of people um, haven't been able to. Uh, and, and again, this is a lot of it is I mean, 90 percent of it, in my belief, is hard work. I, I work, worked and worked to get to get to this point a lot. Yeah. Um, but then the other half of it is 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 luck, probably. Um, I, I, I don't doubt that. But the whole thing. What, what I'm what I'm talking about is I managed to set up a company that was able to support the movie. Right. Yeah. So I've been setting up a production company for seven or eight years um, at that time. And so what does uh, that production company do and what did it do 10 years ago or five years ago as right. compared to? Well, it's just, it just just the difference in sheer size of the company. Right. The amount of staff, the amount of. Uh, finances and resources that we have available is just. But were you working much, on movies? Were you working on commercials? All, all, everything. So, so our our producer, we have we have uh, full time. We have twelve full time producers that work for us, and they yeah. all take on multiple projects themselves, right, for the company and oversee them. 
to through delivery. Yeah. So what I was able to do is I was able to take a couple of those guys from our production team and put them on full time on my movie. Right. Yeah. So that's this is what I'm saying is I was, I was able to subsidize the movie with with our production company, essentially. So so that's where, um, you know, I was able to take advantage of all my years hard, you know, prior years hard work. This is where I was able to kind of spend that in a way um, spend. So um, I would say that it, it it like it's really it's it's not easy to explain what we do. We do everything. We do corporate videos. We do commercials. We do feature films. Um, we provide just production services here for yeah. feature films and TV shows. Um, and that just means like we we're booking and coordinating all the crew, local contacts, for arranging film permits and locations and that sort of thing. So like all the logistics right. for the, 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 the show whenever it comes from abroad. So, um, so everyone at my company has been trained in doing films for a long time. Um, so whenever it was time to do our movie, it was very much just like wash and, you know, rinse and repeat for them. Right. Um, That's so nice. okay, good. That's what we wanted to hear was the steps, you know, and how you got to this. So how long does it take to make this movie? When did you start? When did it come to fruition? Yeah. So we wrote this script incredibly fast much faster than it should have been written to be honest in my opinion wow but um, very good script thank you thank you so uh, nico, shout out to nicolo yeah. do you call him nico yeah. or nicolo you can call him nico if you're a friend everyone knows as nicolo whatever you want to deep i'm sure he's got some uh, yeah yeah i'm sure he's got some other nicknames too somewhere so <laughs> well hopefully he'll watch this and he'll get to hear me say man he was uh, very very good script brother very good yeah. and i love y'all's collaboration seems like y'all are you. a perfect team yeah, we've been working together for a long time. Um, so he's he's also the cinematographer on on the movie. Um, and so he he's been shooting commercials. He and I've been shooting commercials together for oh, probably six or seven years now. Um, and so during COVID, we just got frustrated because we were able to we were not able to shoot any of the projects that we had. And so he just decided, you know what, I'm going to write a completely new script. I said do it. Don't worry about the budget. Just write what comes to mind. You know, let's just make the, the script work really well. Um, and we're able to use like all of our, you know, back pocket assets, essentially. Like we, we knew we had locations. We knew we had this equipment. We knew, you know, the owners of this area or that place or that location, or, you know, we're really good friends with some of the vendors out here so they can give us, you know, equipment and sponsor the movie. So so we were able to, like, take all those things that we had, like, built up over the years and put into the film. So we were able to really take advantage in that way. And so he wrote with all that stuff in mind. Um, and then so, so, so that that way we could use the money and put it towards other stuff that really helped raise the production value and made it count. Um, and so that's kind of that was our approach for the whole thing. Um, and uh, Nico did a fantastic job with the script, in my opinion. He, 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 he gave us something that was great. It has a bunch of different levels. You know, if you continue to think about the movie afterwards, like you really understand that like um, Lorraine, the lead character, that he um, has, you know, a lot of different stuff going on. Um, and, and he's multiple that levels. That would be Luis bad. Mandalore. Yeah, Luis Mandalore. So he's awesome. He's great to work with too, man. Um, you know, every chance they should. Um, well, let's talk yeah. about just was there any uh, restrictions the outside actors. of COVID? Uh, yeah, there was. Um, there was until we we didn't get we didn't have too much in restrictions here. To be honest, um, it's Asia. Everyone here wears a mask, anyways. Like right. Um, anytime anyone ever gets sick, they always wear it just as a precaution so they don't get other people sick. Like before COVID, this is a thing, right? It's always been a thing here. Right. Um, and and so it was a it, like, there was not a, it was, the virus is not widespread. Like there wasn't, you know, not not as much as some of the other countries. And I mean, who knows what's what, right? Like there's no way to actually go back and tell what's what. But like the whole thing is we we didn't have a lot of restrictions. The, the borders were sealed, but we were still able to function normally and in, internally in the country, which was, you know, great. I was really happy about that. But we sh we filmed the movie at just at the end of COVID, like in the third year, right? So it's just like a year and a half ago, um, and uh, we yeah we were able to make it without like any any restrictions or anything like really hindering the movie, um, yeah, or stuff that we you know we just did it anyways, <laughs> sometimes right. so.
Yeah. Okay, I've got a lot more questions about the movie. I yeah, hope to make this interview different from the other ones that you've already done. Yeah, um, yeah. So let's get into the actors. Uh, you talked earlier about how Bangkok, Thailand is pretty much a destination. And yeah. uh, you put together a cast of actors that are superb. I mean, Thanks. Uh, Van Quattro and his character, Paul, and uh, yeah. Luis Mandalore, they are captivating, just captivating mm. and so is the guy that plays tar uh panya yeah 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 they're 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 great man we were so fortunate to have them um it, it, we we wrote the parts for these guys you know we wrote the okay. parts for them and we were able to get those those actors the only one that we didn't write it for was uh van quattro um and we just happened to find him on through a casting website um, well, which is weird how, because how about that? he's it's from funny. Fort Worth. It's yeah. funny you had mentioned that because right now I got a special guest. <laughs> That's right. The one and only Van Quattro joining hey. us from Dallas, hey, everybody, Texas. Surprise, Hi, everybody. Hey, hey Josh. Josh. How are you, Van? I'm good, man. You look good to see you. Good to see you. Good again, to see you. I always enjoy listening to your to your podcast or whatever you're doing out there, man. You got yeah. a lot of a lot of knowledge. Thanks, man. That's yeah, cool. thanks for sharing. It's been very entertaining watching. For anybody, I'll drop the link in the chats here in a minute. But if you really want to keep up with Joshua Dixon and get the insights, go to his YouTube channel. He's putting out stuff every day. Thanks for content. doing that. Yeah. Really good. Thank content. you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. So, hey, let's talk together, guys, about how you ended up in this movie, Van Quattro. Um, yeah, it was a wild experience. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a magazine that's called Backstage. And yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a good magazine. Uh, occasionally, you'll get a lead coming through for something like that. But it's mostly, you know, the tail end parts or the day players or um, you know, supporting roles. And, and I remember telling my girlfriend, I said, there's this thing and I'm really attracted to this thing. I'm really, because it was, it, the, even the set it was, it was kind of visceral, you know, and exciting and dangerous, it felt. Even the audition call. And so I, I did this thing where I put on this like flamboyant shirt and I just kind of like mumbled through the lines, you know, trying to do my Marvin Brando or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I got a call back and I'm like, okay, all right, interesting to see where this goes. And, uh, and we kind of did it again. And I, and, and I was like, all right, I'm starting to feel this, you know, a little bit. I'm starting to feel it. But these, how do I, I don't know these guys. They're in Thailand. I mean, if it wasn't for my sort of, uh, my, my, my get up and go spirit, I probably yeah. wouldn't have done it. But I mean, my whole life, I just dropped shit and, and gone, you know. Yeah. So we do it in a third. Kind of like Joshua Dixon there. Y'all have that in common. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, we did it a third time, I think it was, and maybe even a fourth time at some point, Joshua, wasn't it? And and you and Nico were in the room, and, and we're all kind of, and I'm, I've done it a couple of times for y'all. And I'm like going, wow, is this thing going to really happen? And so you're both just sitting there, and, and it got quiet after, after the last <laughs> minute. And I'm sitting there, and I go, and so after a few seconds, they go, well? <laughs> and I go, well, what? What? And they go, well, do you want to do it? And I said, Man, you mean like come over to Thailand and do it? And they were like, yeah, you have to come over to Thailand to do this. And, <laughs> and when do you do it? It's like next week, a week and a half out, weren't we? Something yeah, like something. That? It was pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty quick. And I just kind of like, yeah, okay, let's go. And the, the saving, the thing that really helped me to, to go, you know, have faith in this project was knowing that you came from here, Joshua, and how that ever works out, I don't ever <laughs> know. But I had a it's couple strange. of people. Yeah, I had a couple of people who said, "Yeah, I know him. He's a cool dude. He's really a cool dude." I mean, right. <laughs> otherwise, why would you, you know, get up and yeah, yeah. travel eighteen hours across the ocean not right. knowing who you're going to see? Yeah. But that was something so, that was like thirty years ago. You know, I'm just filling yeah. in the blank here. You audition via Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's nuts. We we've, we've we've he and I've been in you know. I'm sure we've been 10 miles apart before, you know, yeah. multiple times, and we've never run into each other. This is the first time. So, 
Yeah, that's crazy. Well, while we have you, Van, I want you to know you nailed it. I mean, you're play, uh, everybody watching. If you haven't seen the movie yet, you got to go see it. Uh, the main character is this Luis Mandalore, who is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make any artwork, you have to have the proper contrast going on. And in this case, it's contracting personalities and uh, a van you just nailed that part you i Jake mean it's great. it's perfect yeah, man you. it's very captivating thank you it was exciting it was exciting to work on and you know and you get a guy like luis who you know he of the action guys that are out there in these movies that they pump out you know where you shoot 500 people and you just walk out the door and there's yeah. really no consequence no relationship it's just right. to shoot them up luis has got that thing man where you really care about the guy yeah and I found that, you know, in working with him, and it was good to have that quality to work off of because, you know, I'm his adversary, but still, I'm kind of like, all right, man, you know, there's a part of me that kind of likes you. Um, and he's ruthless, and he's ruthless. And I remember there was one scene where he was, he was putting, he was talking about his tattoo, and he was wrapping his hand at the kitchen. Yeah. And I just got this wild hair. I just thought, wrap my hair about that. and I thought, this is not a rabbit. <laughs> And I could see he looked right, right in the fucking eye, like, let's go, man. <laughs> you know? And I thought, that's it. That's exciting for me as an actor. You know, sure, sure. you guys coming alive together yeah. in between the lines. Cool. And he was that's a great awesome. Inspiration, great inspiration. And he had a lot of knowledge on the set, a lot of knowledge. And he helped, you know, he helped me out a lot. And, and sort of staying calm and, 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 and you know, keeping my focus on, uh, on the character in the series. Mm. Well, it sounds like the three of you all have a lot in common, and I feel like maybe there's a friendship, a bonding here that's taking place that uh, we might see you all, all working together in the future. It'd be great. Uh, Joshua, I'm proud of you, man. I'm telling you, uh, you, you know, I, I can't bullshit you. You know, I, I just not capable of doing it. And uh, Van Quattro plays that part to a T. So does Louis Mandalore. And that's part of what it takes to make a movie that keeps you, you know, keeps you involved in the movie. You have to have these, you know, you have to have a storyline, but you have to have these captivating uh, actors to, mm. to do it, you know. And uh, even though you did play a little bit of a scoundrel role in the end, I, you had my heart there for the longest. <laughs> You know, I, when I saw the film, I was just so amazed with the production value. And uh, 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 Joshua, what you and Nico had in your mind. And I, I, yeah. I have to, I'm assuming, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming you, you guys kind of put that focus on it so hard that you got what you wanted, or at least close to it. Yeah, exactly. We, you're, you're spot on with that. Yeah, I mean, I could see you guys. I saw the wheels turning the whole time. The whole yeah. time, the whole time. Well, no, totally. And Nick, Nico and I have been shooting together for so long, right? So, like, he and I understand what we're expecting to get out of it. So, there's a lot of, you know, it's almost telepathic, um, yeah. you know, during yeah. that whole process. Yeah. And some of those, some of the action scenes, the fight yeah. scenes are the best fight scenes I've seen in a film in a long time. Thank you, man. They're that brutal means so and much. they're visceral. They're, they're just yeah. right there, you know? It's, uh, yeah. yeah, good stuff. Yeah, thanks, man. I don't know how you would have made it better, honestly. You know, there's nothing weak about it. I just Thank don't you. know how you would have made it better. Awesome. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, that's the you know that that uh, we 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 did what we set out to do. So like that that's really cool to hear, man. It, it means the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for doing it for us, man. I know you put a lot of labor. It's a labor of love, but I know you put a lot of labor and time money into it and uh, man i yeah. want to thank you because i really enjoyed it and i'm real picky about movies man i don't enjoy that many movies how many cool. people on average did you have working on this film you mean like every day on set or let's do every day on set and then all together because it feels yeah. Like, yeah films take a lot of work and a lot of moving parts yeah well there's yeah, a do. lot going on a lot of scenes yeah yeah, I mean, we had probably about 100 people every day. Um, I think there was a couple of days where we had more because we had like 40 or 50 extras in the scene. Um, 
So it, between like 80 to 120, 130 people every day on average. Um, and yeah, I mean, doing movies is hard work. It takes a lot of people to organize a lot of prep work and planning um, because you got to go into a location, set everything up with all these people, shoot everything, you know, in a very calm manner and make the actors feel comfortable and give them, you know, place to perform and then make sure you're technically getting all your shots and then leaving and then putting the location back together, you know, with all these people. So like, it's a whole other world and mindset and, uh, and it's yeah, something people that. take years to, to, to master. So how Just about the parking name. garage scene? What's that? The parking garage scene. Yeah. That was incredible. There was you, equipment man. everywhere in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, the top, the, the top, right? With the, the, the fight club on the top. Yeah. 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 That, that was another, I, t I tell you, man, we just did not have it in us to do anything small now that I look at it. Like, <laughs> but look at it. It looks yeah. awesome. Well, look, at, look at Van Quattro's. Sorry, Ariel. Look at Van Quattro's spread. That's <laughs> one of the coolest shots when you come in, I guess, with that drone over there where he yeah, has yeah. his fight club. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was fun. Yeah, it's a, another rooftop fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it's awesome. It's beautiful, though. It's beautiful. The presentation. That was the first night of shooting on a rooftop in yeah. Bangkok. What was it, about 30 stories up, 40, something like that? Oh, I think it was more than that. It was, was it? like 70 or 80. Yeah, yeah it was wow. massive. That was the yeah. first night of shooting. <laughs> yeah. It's like, whoa. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I could keep did my Joe, Did Joe have to get special clearances to film some of these places? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had to get per permission for everything. Um, so when, when you have 100 people, you can't steal shots, you know, so like you're, <laughs> you're, you're bringing in 100 people, tents, you know, generators and, and stuff, you know, generator trucks. And, uh, you know, there's a there's an RV. So people have a, you know, a, a bathroom and stuff like that. So like, um, you know, you're having to yeah set up and block streets off and stuff like that just for parking. So um, it's yeah all, everything's clearance i think there's like one or two times where we snuck in somewhere with a camera to get something because we we needed something and it was just like one person but that's like probably an establishing shot of like a crowd somewhere a really big crowd where you can't see people's faces or something on a busy street at night um but everything other than that if there's you know actors in it yeah there's definitely all kinds of clearances locations and and this is really where it goes back to like we we had the company ready to go you know that to help support the company so or to help support the movie so um yeah it's a lot of work man it's a lot of work what was your most difficult scene to shoot good question so i i've thought about this somebody asked me this recently and i i said all of them like 90 percent of them were difficult <laughs> right um but probably the two scenes that van was in the okay. one the two rooftop scenes were extremely difficult because the setup time and allowance for for the setup time so like the for your first night there van that was the one of the most difficult so scenes i've ever ever had if you remember when we wrapped and we had to shoot all the other stuff yeah. at night between you and vitaya and luis the yeah. like the little triangle you guys were standing in yeah. like that whole thing was it was like we were going into overtime and nico and i couldn't agree on something like there's creative differences on top of all the stress of like the logistics not working out correctly and and whatnot but like that whole thing that whole location that rooftop um we only had like eight or ten hours maximum oh. um so this is like hauling a fight club scene to the top like chains and uh you know like an octagon ring type setup right to the very to you know up up service freight elevators right which are very small so you had to do like 15 or 20 trips yeah exactly so so it took an hour and a half just to move everything up to the top set up shoot and then it's an hour and a half back and i think we only had like eight or ten hours to do everything Jeez. and in the end we were like our production manager was on the phone with the location being like guys can we just get one more hour please okay can we get one more hour again please you know it was just like <laughs> like we were just like pushing the envelope the whole the whole time on the production um and so that that is definitely like seared into my brain is like a high stress and 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 you know a a memorable time in that manner so there was that one um and i mean there's there was other ones you know like where we shot um 
Well, uh, let's talk Rick. about them. Yeah, yeah, I ahead. do want to. I do want to mention that uh, this movie features Bangkok, Thailand, a lot of city views and like the coloring in it. It's just the it makes the city look beautiful. And so that element of being on top of the high rise gives you another feature. Uh, view, you know, perspective of the city. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really was a worthwhile effort to get that shot that, or those shots that way. Thanks, man. The gentleman that played the kingpin. Yeah. Were those all real tattoos, or did y'all have to put that on him? No, no, no. That guy. This part was written for him. If you, if you like, go and Google him, research him. Um, okay. Like his parts, not far off from his actual life. Holy so cow. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's um he's he's famous in Thailand for this lifestyle and the type of person that he he used to be. Not now, but yeah, he used to be, right? So he's a former um I mean, whatever. I, I don't know the specific te technicalities of it all, but like he's he's known for that. Um, you know, for <laughs> getting Joe well with the crew. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, well, he, so, I mean, he's he's been in prison several times. So, uh, yeah, he had a great dangerous quality about him. <laughs> it's natural. Like I if you go it. if you go watch the interviews with him. Um, so he he did some interviews for us for for the movie just a, like a few months ago. He uh, he he talks about how like he really identifies with the character, and it's kind of like I'm you're sure. kind of like what. <laughs> So, cause he's, he's talking about how he identifies with being a psychopath and stuff. So like, it's pretty interesting. You should go, you should go watch his interviews. Isn't he a singer now? He a singer? Uh, yeah. He's, he's a bit of a celebrity. So he sings, he does all kinds of stuff, you know? Um, it's, it's kind of like what Thai internet celebrities do. They'll put out an album, they'll go do, you know, promotions and, you know, endorse products and stuff like that. And so like, he's just followed that naturally. Um, yeah. But yeah, he 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 sings and you know does all kinds of stuff. He was promoting some gambling websites online, and so I think he's gotten into some troll recently for that too. So you know, he does everything, man. The yeah, guy, he seemed, guy he seemed like he has How about, uh, your promotion. Did, did they roll up the red carpet for you? Sorry, what what did you say? I was saying, what that? was the what was the promotion like for you? Did they uh, roll the red carpet out for you? And make you answer questions against your will? Yeah, I mean the promotion's all us, man. We paid for it all, so we did it. We 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 sponsored the premiere ourselves. Um, we did everything, you know. So when when we when we sold the so we sell the movie to different territories all over the world, right? Distributors take it and they do what they want with the movie. But the the ultimate premiere, you know, that we had the first premiere, that was all us. So like, um, I made sure I didn't get asked any questions I didn't want to. <laughs> if that if that answers your question, but yeah. Um, it was fun, man. It was great. Is there a, like a talk show circuit that you went on? Um, just lots of podcasts right now. Um, we're, we're just doing lots of podcasts. Um, the thing is that right now, Hellhound's only out in North America. It'll be out uh, globally. Um, I think there's four months that we have to wait to release it to other distributors <laughs> um, globally. So uh, right now I'm just really trying to do, you know, podcasts and promote um, the film for North America. After that, um, when it releases globally, you know, each country, it'll have, you know, what whatever we can round up and uh, in terms of podcasts and online. But, um, man, I wish we could do talk shows and stuff like that. But like just the, the amount of money and, you know, resources are just not there for that. Um, I think that's kind of a thing of the past, um, unless, you know, you're doing Hollywood, you know, you know, Twenty million dollar movies up and up or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, so it's I a watched different it, level of cartel. Go ahead, Ariel. I watched it on Amazon Prime. I was just talking to Ricky about this. Um, for whatever reason, we didn't get the translated subtitles for. Uh, mm -hmm. the is that, yeah, we yeah, didn't I did get yeah. on there, but he did. Is that normal? No. <laughs> so this this is something this is something that I I found out about. So the distributor. There was an issue with whatever copy they didn't give the subtitle top copies for Thai to some of some of the outlets. Where did you watch it, Rick? Amazon Prime here at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we, Ariel, when when did you watch it? Friday. We watched it Friday, right? Huh? Yeah, we watched it this past Friday. And you just watched it yesterday? Yeah, last night. So they updated it literally during that time because I emailed them about, about this last week. 
Well, can you yeah. email them and tell them I want um, a review because <laughs> I'd like to watch a movie with the subtitles? Because not I, that I couldn't do inferencing. I just yeah, yeah. I feel like there's I'll a send, lot of passion missed. No, wait, I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link so you can watch it. You can okay. watch it online. Yes. On, on well, give them podcast. her physical address. So sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, we don't know what they're saying. And I think, and we were yeah. like, let's guess what they're saying. We'd pause it and be like, I think he's saying this. I think this is what's going <laughs> on right now. Yeah. Well, greatest drinking Jeff game ever. Our truest uh, movie watchers of the podcast here, and so awesome. she knew they knew it was important what he was saying, and yeah. so I filled her in that my take was that he kind of filled in uh, the blanks, if you will, between the character of uh, Luis Mandalore, uh, yeah. his character. The show starts with the opening scene. That's one of the coldest openings I've ever seen. You know, I mean, I love that opening scene. Right. Cool. That, that yeah, lit yeah, me yeah. up. That lit awesome, me up. Man. And so then you tied it together with the closing scene, you know? And yep. it, so basically this main character is pretty twisted. He's got personal shit that's on a deep level going on. Yeah. But you don't really see that in the movie. During the movie, he's just hell bent to get this gangster he's after and is willing to drop anybody on the dime along the way. Yeah. But the uh, Asian guy, the 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 you know the other third main characters the way i think yeah. of him uh you know what he says especially when he's breaking the guy's fingers and things he kind of fills in the the torment that between the beginning and opening scene does that make sense yeah yeah no definitely i had to go I back so. i had to go back and watch the beginning again because i felt like i missed something so if anybody's um on the chats right now if you're gonna watch it make sure you pay very close attention to the beginning um, cause it really ties into the story. And if you miss what's going on between the interaction of who he's going to kill and why you might miss a little bit of something that's important in there to tie back to the character's personality. I had missed something and I was like, something's not right. I miss it. So I went yeah, back yeah. and rewatched and I was, I was, everything came together a little bit more. Cool. Cool. So. Yeah, no, there's there's a few there's a few times you can do that. You can keep watching it and get a little bit more each time. Um, yeah, that was one of the things that really drew me to the script too. You talked about the cinematography earlier, and yeah. uh, I really enjoyed um, that opening scene. Maybe it wasn't like that opening scene, but when he lit the thing on fire, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, it was I, just I don't really know how cool. you talk about this without saying that. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, put this... something on fire. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but that scene, it was really good. The the graphics yeah. of it all was, it Thank didn't you. seem over-generated or anything. It was It was real. Up. It's all yeah. it's all real fire. Yeah. But so, you know, yeah. I was struck by this. I, I, I need to mention this. I was struck by the cinematography because yeah. it had, for me, it had all the elements of, of great movies. Like, I saw I saw Taxi Driver in there, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I yeah. do. The cart going up the street, the girl walking. I mean, the city had that feel to it. It had that. I felt I felt that city. And, and that awesome. was pretty much in every shot. Every yeah. shot captured what was in on that set. Yeah. Uh, beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. There's no fillers in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was so I just want to say uh, Ben Quattro is cool. <laughs> thank you man thank you Dave. well on yeah. that van quattro is so cool he's going to be back with us to spend you know a couple hours as our special guest interview at the end of march so thank you for that uh what other movies have you been in van um well recently um i've done some work up in oklahoma they've, they've got a pretty good little film scene going on up there cool. so um uh, the last thing i did was it was called reverence and a filmmaker up there named uh, Kyle Kawika Harris. Okay. And he's putting out like five movies a year now. So I'm, I've worked with him a bit. Um, I did some Bass Reeves here, you know, locally, uh, the TV show Bass Reeves. Uh -huh. So you know, you're staying busy. Just staying busy here and there. Yeah. All For right. Well, I just wanted region, to. You know, it's a, it's a, Texas is sort of a, it's sort of an iffy region. You know, they don't get a lot of the perks. So not a lot of productions are coming here, but we have we do have Taylor Sheridan, so he's got the big ranch and you know things like that. Um, I, I have to mention, like, it's not a huge part, but 
Van was in a very iconic movie that like got me started in filmmaking. That was Fight Club. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, he had a scene in there, and <laughs> just the 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 fact that he was a part of that is so cool to me. Well, yeah, you know what? Not that right. I'm just like, how did I get there? I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so yeah. happy that happened. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to do was prime the pump and tease our listeners for you coming back in March because you were oh, also at the Schwarzen end of days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scene is. Maybe a burn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That, is, that was awesome. So we got a lot to talk to you about and can't wait for you to come back and do that. But thank you so much for being here tonight and supporting nice Joshua man. Dixon and this movie Hellhound. All right, let's talk about the fight scene, yep. Joshua. Sure, man. That's a what killer fight know? scene. Like Van yeah. said earlier, it's one of the best fight scenes of modern time. I mean, dude, that Thank you. everything about this movie is on point. There's no fillers in this movie, dude. I feel yeah. like I know you, and I know your personality, and it's in the movie, man. You didn't waste nothing. <laughs> <laughs> who who coordinated <laughs> and choreographed the fight scenes? Because I know that um, takes some choreography yeah. so our stunt coordinator so our fight and stunt coordinator was a guy here in thailand his name's jj um he worked with nico really in designing a lot of the fights and then i would get filled in kind of at the end of the day or along the process and give my notes and and my feedback um and so it was it's a very collaborative effort right so when you're doing this you have uh you know who everyone everyone's going to be in the scene and you kind of stack cardboard boxes up in the shape of the room and where like props and furniture will be so you have like the geography of how you're going to do things around in that scene and and so you practice and design it within that space and um usually shoot it and then edit it see how it's going to fit together and then once everything's locked then we actually go and shoot that actually on the real shoot days with the proper lighting cast crew props locations and that's weird yeah yeah so so i think we took about five days to do all the fight scenes um so it's, it's about a day per fight scene um and then i just gave my feedback um as we went you know directing like a lot of people they think that like it's very hands-on and a lot of stuff like i feel that directing is answering lots of questions all the time and you directing people to do things for you so um, I, I would say that like it was very much a collaborative effort, but it was also me just giving feedback a lot because um, I was busy prepping the rest of the movie while they're doing this. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but it's 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 fun, man. I love fight scenes. They're 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 always high energy. And, um, you know, when you see it edited together, you're like, wow, that worked. That worked. You know? yeah. So it's yeah. So it's really it's really, uh, really nice to see. I always get excited when I was younger watching movies. I would just pretend to jump around and do some kick flips and stuff and i always thought yeah, it was yeah. really cool and then when you look behind the scenes of how much work it actually yeah, yeah, takes yeah. you don't just willy-nilly go oh we're no. gonna fight we're gonna do something now no yeah, it's yeah. it there's an actual art to it in performing yeah. it no definitely the art the, the technicality of the whole thing like um you know this is where this is where i feel like the most important thing when you're when you're producing a movie is picking good people you yeah, know, and picking those people that 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 are really going to be you know help this the movie be successful. So um, that's that's really where it comes. That's what it comes down to. Um, you know, so if you get people that don't know what they're doing or inexperienced, like it's just going to affect everything. So the amount of work that goes into it is definitely a lot. It's definitely a lot. Hey, Josh, what, what happened in that room where where uh, Luis was fighting, where the TV got smashed and stuff like that in there? Yeah, it looks so real, dude. It's because it, it is was. real, and yeah, it was it was my actual bedroom. So, oh, aha, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so know. You get your house put back together and the blood out. Of yeah, your we we had we had to so so we had to buy my. I, I got a whole new bedroom set out of it actually, nice. because the, the, <laughs> that bedroom set was completely destroyed. So and the light. And yeah, everything. Well, so the light was put there for the fight, right? So well, that was, it was a good fake. placement, man. That was a perfect smash <laughs> right there. there. That was the only thing that was meant to get beat up during, during that. <laughs> That's everything funny. else was, well, the TV, the TV and the light were planned. Everything else, um, they just ended up like, it was, the fight was going to happen on top of it and not smash items. Like it was going to make it look like they did, but they went ahead and smashed like the first item on accident. And so we were like, let's just keep smashing stuff. 
<laughs> in in the bedroom, and um, it was it was a bit of a shocker to me. I was I was I was happy, but I was also really uh, irritated. This is the one time you can ask Nico where I was like, "What are you doing? Wait, 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 wait!" You know, and they still kept shooting, and um, I'm glad that they didn't listen to me <laughs> during that time. Yeah, because it, it turned out really well. Um, well, in the slide down the the staircase, I haven't seen yeah, a better man. slide and thud thud yeah, thud than that. No, TJ. So TJ is the the gangster in that one, right? The 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 big guy, right? Yeah. Um, he is undoubtedly probably the toughest guy that we know. He he actually he's he's a real life professional fighter. Uh, he just did this bare knuckle challenge, like uh, fight a, a few months ago here in Thailand. Um, so he's like the real deal. So, um, some t somehow he has the gift of being able to like take blows to his body and he still functions. So when he flipped over the stairs, like those stairs are real stairs. They do have like a little bit of padding that's on the top of it. Uh, this painted to match the wood. So, it, you know, like you have an artist actually sure. paint like the wood grain on top yeah. of the padding to make it look real. Um, and then he's got some pads under his clothes, but the fall he did is, is intense. If you actually go to my, ins I think it's my YouTube, like there's a short on there that shows my angle of him falling. So I'm down under the stairs and I caught it on my cell phone and I just put it on there uh, a few few weeks ago. So like you see him land on the stairs and they come down and everyone is watching and everyone's just like winces, you know. So, I've fallen downstairs before. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun with the. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, fun times. I can't imagine. Uh, does he practice any type of? Um, I know you said he did a bare knuckle fight, but does he practice yeah. any type of martial arts or any? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, yeah, because they I'm teach sure. you. Totally. They, I, I don't. I don't know the the ins and outs of what what he actually is is yeah. is um has studied, but like he for sure has studied. You know, probably multiple martial arts. He's yeah. he's an he's a he's a mixed martial artist. Essentially, so yeah, my my dad did sword art. I, I forget. There's like a specific cool. word, and um, so he would te he would, he would always try to teach me use center of gravity and your chi and all this, and then yeah, yeah. There's a proper way to fall, and yeah, it's insane yeah. to think yeah, no, about all that. Yeah, so TJ does that, and then he's also, he, from what I understand, he was also um, he was also a drama major as well from from years ago. So like. He's very he's a very good combination for the part. That's great. Speaking Balance of drama, that. was there any drama on set? Um I mean, not not any more than there is typically uh drama on set. Um there was dramatic moments in 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 terms of like something went wrong, but not 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 drama like between uh I mean the only the only thing was Nico destroying my bedroom and me getting upset about that. But other than that, everything was pretty smooth. The uh, the dramatic moments for us were probably like when we were shooting this scene out in the country and it's raining, right? And uh, we we're we we're we we're so far behind, we mm -hmm. ran out of rain. Uh, you know, the water truck ran out of water, and so we actually had to end that scene early. That scene was written different, so. The kid was actually going to grab the gun and 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 be forced to shoot shoot the guy on the ground. In the, oh in the wow! Script. But we had to turn it to like he just sat there and watched him, and then we cut back to reality at the end of it. So, um, yeah. So like that's that's the whole thing, man. Making these indie films is like leveraging your creativity to be able to continue. You know what I mean? Like so, whenever you run into a problem, how can we creatively solve it and get to the next one? Do you so, ever have those magic moments anyone... where everything just clicks and you're just like, <sighs> oh yeah, of course. I mean, the the actors, the actors, we we set ourselves up for that. So the actors were were able to give that to us time and time again. Um, Way to go, Van. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Telling you, Van was. Did anyone get sick that y'all had to like power through it? Um. Yes. Our production manager, I know she had a couple of sleepless nights. I actually don't know how she's able to power through it. She's a machine. Her name's I. Shout out to her. She's fantastic. She's one of the full-time staff at our company. Um, she just finished a feature, was finished wrapping it yesterday, and she starts on another feature basically tomorrow. Uh, or sorry, another 
sorry, she finished a TV series starting on another TV series tomorrow. So she's uh, a machine and she really helps, you know, she's a, extremely valuable in that instance. So she has put in so much work on Hellhound. Like I, I can't explain it. She, she was really, you know, a backbone of it without her, it wouldn't have been made. Um, and so I'm sure she was battling sickness all the time. I know she's battling, you know, sleep depravity for sure. Yeah. No sickness other than that though. That I know. Did, did, did the writer strike in the States have any effect on the Thai film industry? Yeah, definitely. Because, um, well, so, so you have to, you have to understand that there's kind of two different industries here, right? You have the Thai industry, which is for Thailand, and then you have the international film industry, right, which comes to shoot here and uses and, and takes advantage of Thailand's cost and and locations. Um, and that was heavily affected by the, the industry, right? We didn't have shows here for six months during that. Fortunately, like we we have our roots dug deep enough here that we're able to still continue doing Thai film industry. Production. Um, so, and then we've got, you know, corporate and commercial, which is a whole other thing, um, not affected at all by that. But yeah, it was, um, it, 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 it was very, very uh, frustrating, you know, that like every time we thought the strike was about to end, like it didn't. And so we couldn't put out offers to actors on new projects and that sort of thing. So, oh. um, yeah. So, so um, now that it's over, it's great. Like we're making offers and um, hopefully we're going to be able to announce like our, our second and third movie soon. Um, we're just waiting on some cast to confirm. Um, so yeah, so it's it's it's. I'm very very happy the strike's over now. Yeah. Was there any meddling from the upper brass to be like, oh, I don't like this line, or no, you should say more of this? That's me and and Nico, man. Like we we put this is our movie from the beginning. So like, there was you know some other people that would put money in, but. Um, you know, they didn't, they stayed out of this completely. They're just, you know, financial investment, but like Nico and I are the ones calling the shots on the whole movie. So like anytime Nico and I disagreed, it was that, that was the the challenge is getting around that. And, um, you know, we, we tried to get all that done before we started production, right? Like during prep and, and Nico wrote this script in Italian originally. He's, he's Italian. So it was his first language. He wrote it and that, and then we translated it. And then I went back over and rewrote it again in English and then we came back and had like one final, you know, like head knock session where we were trying to figure out like what we want to, you know, how, how things need to come across in the scenes and the dialogue and that sort of thing. So um, we tried to get all of, you know, our uh, disagreements out of the way in prep. That's that's the most important thing. So that like whenever we're on set and we're working with everyone, it's very clear communication for everyone. Everyone else. How long was pre-production? uh man not not <laughs> not even long enough i think we had two or three weeks um and i mean i tried to i i i guess we kind of been prepping for it for a long time right because we we knew where everything was going to be um but i think we had probably two weeks solid of just full-time prep and then before that we were you know i mean i was i was i was prepping everything i was working on script rewrites i was or you know like punch-ups and, and scenes and stuff like that. And then I was working on uh, getting casting and, and getting locations. So, I mean, I was out scouting probably for a month or two before we shot, trying to find the locations or perfect angles. And so Nico and I'd have a day off, we'd go out and see a location. Um, you know, the next week we'd have another day off, we got to see three or four locations. So like, we started prepping, I don't know, a few months before, but like solid full-time prep, probably two weeks, um, which is not near enough. Like. You want at least a month, if not like five or six weeks to prep for a movie. Apparently it was enough. You might have <laughs> lost some sleep in the process, but it was enough because the movie kicks ass. Thank you. Well, I, we've been prepping for years. <laughs> Let me say that. We've been prepping for years, man. Thank you. That's going to be exciting, though. I mean, whenever we we finish our first studio recorded song. Yeah. Like just the that moment when you hear it, you're, you're like, that's us. Sure. What? No, we did that? It's so the whole moment was for us was so we obviously so we we finished the movie right we shot it we had a trailer cut together we had the first scene cut together and then we went to a film market in LA to try to sell the movie um, and we met a great uh, sales company there called Skatina and Rosner um, SNR is what we call them for short they're great guys they did a really really great 
great job. They helped to, uh, you know, get distribution. We've basically, you know, already recouped everything that we spent on the movie. So that's fantastic um, or, or near nearly. So they, they've been excellent in that. Um, and then that I thought that that would be like the moment, like we sold the movie, you know, and that would be the moment where I was like, wow, I did it. Everything's complete. And then when we had the premiere here and then I was able to see like 200 of my peers in the room watching the film, like in an actual theater, um, that was the moment where I was like, wow, this, this actually happened. This was real. And this is just a couple of weeks ago. So like, that's where, you know, it's just, it's just an amazing experience. That's where it, it, it was like, okay, the year and a half of work, it's now been done, you know, at that point. Yeah. What a good now, feeling. Now, if this movie becomes like a hit, do you go for the sequel or you branch out? You know, I, I'm, I'm always for, um, I, I personally don't care to make a sequel to this. Um, I would like to discuss the ending in just a second. I'd, I'd rather make a prequel, um, but but I don't I don't know. Me, I I my my personal feelings on this was like this was a great feeling. It was a great experience. I'm done with Hellhound. <laughs> just to be like honest, like not in a bad way, but just like that chapter of my life is over. I'm 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 I've got other things in the works right now. Um, so there's, so, I mean, there's a couple other movies, um, that, that I'm working on right now to direct. Um, so I'm really excited about those. Maybe in a couple of years, we could look at something, but, um, you know, I, I think that could Hellhound. Discuss any of those projects? Yeah, um, we yeah, would, I, we would definitely like to be encouraged by hearing about sure. that. First, I want to no, welcome no, definitely. you to live streaming because I need to give a shout out to Crimson here. Look at this beautiful lady. Thank you, Crimson. Uh, we love you, baby. Twenty dollars tonight to our super. Thank you, super chat. Thank you for that, super chat. Funny. And that's just how it works. Thank you for being awesome. here, everybody. Joshua, go ahead and tell us what you have that you're working on now, because we want to be sending you our best thoughts and well wishes and excited for you. Thanks. Um, I, I actually can't mention them at the moment. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I, I so we have I have to wait until it's officially announced. Um, yeah, sure. Makes so, sense. But there's I, I can just kind of give you a, a bit of a rundown on on what they are. So there's there's a sci fi uh, movie. Um, it's going to be really, really fun. It deals with a lot of AI type stuff. And cool. then there's another one that's a creature movie. Um, and so they're, you know, and these, these, these are not your typical sci-fi or creature movie. They've, they've got a lot of drama in there. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a bit more of a, we're, we're going for a bigger budget looking movie, right? So a bit more Hollywood on these two movies. Um, and it'll, it'll have cast that everyone knows. So that's, that's the really exciting part too. So um, the cast that's going to be in those movies. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. So hopefully we can all work with, you know, some names that we've all admired throughout the years. Very yeah. cool. Well, right. so I'd like to casually discuss the ending without giving the ending away. Good luck at that. So let's do it. Casual. <laughs> um, so knowing Hellhound's character. Yeah. Do we think he did? Or do Sorry. You think he did the very so, ending. Could could you repeat that again? I think it cut out on my oh, side. Do we think he did or didn't after the time was up? He did. Uh, Who votes he did? Yeah, you're talking about the j just after the watch, right? Yeah. The watch yep, yep. cuts to black, and then you yep. see him walking in the forest, right? You want to know what happened between those two periods of time, right? Yep. Okay. This is really difficult to talk about without. Well, he has a yes. shovel in his hand. <laughs> all, um, all I have to say, who just be like he David did. Chase and just change your answer every time. Yeah. <laughs> so this, no, this is I, I, I don't have uh, an answer. I purposely put that in there in that way, or kept it in that way, so that no one, so that you, we would have this discussion. To right? cause disruption in people's lives that need to know the endings <laughs> to everything, like me. Yeah. So, well, so here's the thing, right? Um, he's so evil, right? Lorraine's evil. He Pretty is, much. he knows he's evil. And he taught, he had a conversation with the girl, right? The, the, the woman right before that, yeah. 
yes. talking about ending evil and why, uh, why she's no have... better than him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about um, what you would have to do in order to end that. Right. And so we cut to the next scene and let's just assume he did the very ending right the very very ending right the the, the resolve for the whole movie mm -hmm. that very instance you think okay great all the evil's gone his character's been you know this is spoiler so like his character's dead right he's mm -hmm. he's now been exterminated but it's going to start it all up again he just caused tragedy to to that person that ran out of the woods, right? Mm -hmm. That that kid's now going to be forever affected, right? So yeah. it starts the cycle again. Yeah. So this is this is the whole. This is what kind of like Tay's character. Sorry, kind of like Tay Tar's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's exactly like that, right? So like we've caused another childhood trauma, right? And so it's just going to. It's the next generation of of you know some someone who's going to go down possibly go down the wrong path. Um, and and so I think that that that's that's really what we were trying to make everyone think about, you know, um, and and it's just um, you know there's there's a lot of different layers like Tar as well, right? Like he's got that secret life of his as well, right? Correct. And so so there's so there's there's a lot like that, right? Like so we're trying to really make people think and observe uh, these these characters and and more than just surface level, right? So like understanding what made them do what they're doing and then even further with Lorena, like after he's gone, what's going to happen, uh, you know, from from just a pure accident situation, you know, so um, there's there's a lot of different levels. And, and it's, it's cool to actually be I mean, this is probably my favorite part of the podcast is talking about this sort of stuff about the movie. Yes, because it's, it's a lot of it's hypothetical. Um, Nico, well, and I that, one twist, of the, that twist yeah, that you set up for, you know, uh, the main character finally gets his guy and there's a twist yeah. there involving one of this guy's twisted relationships. Yeah. And it's just, man, it was well written there. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Super Chat. Thank you for that, Super Chat. Thank you again, Crimson. It all helps. You put us up over five, uh, over a hundred for the month. Awesome. Great, great. Yeah, man. I uh thanks for these questions, Ariel. This is this is fantastic. Yeah. I love talking about movies. I would love to be in a movie. I think I could really do some justice. Of course you could. Yeah. We're gonna cool. get into the music score in a minute. Um, um Van's character though, real nice twist. I kind of suspected something was coming with his character. Don't want to give it away for people who haven't watched it yet. But uh I think we're doing pretty good on the spoiler alerts. Was a super <laughs> friendly guy until you weren't, sir. Well, you know. <laughs> you gotta do, you gotta do, right? <laughs> yeah, you had us suckered in, man. I mean, that's how well you played that part. I mean, it was it was a fucking letdown, dude. <laughs> this, this kid, he's helping him out. He's trying to save his friend, even though his friend is. Yeah, like, well, things change, that. you know. You got to take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, getting back to what you were talking about with the ending, we have that conversation in the car. Remember that? What was it? Four thirty yeah. in the morning drive that we did through. Yeah, yeah. Um, we of we discussed it. Uh, Lorenzo and I discussed that a little bit in the car, and I really enjoyed that scene. Yeah. You know, playing it out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, it's yeah. That's see, that's a, that's that's also foretelling as well, right? There's a lot of different moments in the movie that 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 are all interconnected in that way. Mm -hmm. So. The whole movie's interconnected that way, it, yeah. including all the the plot twist. You know, well, even yeah. from the very first phrase, like the whole paragraph of describing right what's basically what's about to come and it can happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I liked how that tied in. I, I like little things like that. Cool. I'm glad you. I'm really happy you 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 you're cut it, you caught those. So I, I know a lot of people, they just watch it for the action because um, it's it's stuck in a lot of the action genre. Um, uh, so um, it's also really, really nice to have the conversations about like the deeper meaning of the movie. So, yeah. Yeah. I love anything that you can read into 
It's not because I'm a female. I know someone's going to think about that on the chats at some point. <laughs> um, no, I really love um, kind of dissecting movies. Even there's some movies I feel like I've watched where there wasn't actually a deeper meaning, but I was like, I wonder if this is what they were really going for. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I think it's just a rom-com. Like, there's really nothing <laughs> else to it. I think you're reading way too much into this. Like, but really? Well, Analytical. I want to say that I'm glad that you left the ending open to interpretation. Yeah. Uh, it did kind of take a little of my breath out away, but, you know, okay. uh, as Ariel said, but that's okay. Like, that's how we enjoy music. You know, we enjoy art the way that we experience it and based on, you know, who we are as a people and our life experiences. So I'm glad that you left that open to interpretation. Great. I did like to how he was like, are we going to let's give it a full minute. Is God going to intervene? Is he going to stop yeah, evil? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The answer is most likely no. It's yeah, gonna I mean, it, exactly. Well, like you got to watch the movie and see what you think. So, well, you know, a very important part of every movie is the music and the score. So, how did you go about scoring the music? Um, I mean, the majority of that is uh, definitely, you know, providing really, really good references for for this with uh, our composer Bruno. Um, I spent about five days with Bruno really kind of just going over, um, what I liked, what I, I didn't like. Um, and then the main thing that we really tried to focus on that I was really pushing for in that was, uh, finding a, a, a hook, a theme, right. That would keep playing throughout the movie. Um, and it had to have a certain tone and quality, right? Like I wanted it written minor. I wanted it to feel a bit sad and, and be memorable and get stuck in your head. Um, and I think I achieved that. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So, um, he, he just really kind of like came up with a score for the whole movie. I would go in with him, go scene by scene, tell him what I'd like, didn't like. Um, and he's just, you know, he's a master of like all instruments. So he would just really re-record, replay, reprogram, um, and, and, um, yeah, that's it, man. It's 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 really like a it's it's a very collaborative, tedious process, I would say. Um, but getting the hook down was the the number one thing. Yeah. How how did you find them? How do how do you as a producer, a movie producer director, how do you go about finding a someone to score a movie like that? Um. So he he was um. He lives here in Thailand, right? He's an Italian composer. Um, he uh -huh. does a lot of stuff. Um, he's very, very well known. He's done a lot of different, you know, movies. Um, but I would say that like his style that he's really good at scoring is what drew us to, to him. Um, yeah. because, uh, it needed to be a classical, um, a classical style. It needed to be, you know, it needed to sound like, like gladiator or something like that right like it needed mm -hmm. to have um strings and orchestra in it and so like that's really kind of what drew me to him because he he does a lot of that well when you were talking about the ebb and flow of the score uh it sounded yeah. almost like you were talking about the filming because the way you presented all of the shots they all have a flow to them especially the way that because a lot of it's in the city like you really yeah present thailand bangkok thailand and uh, so they all have that same kind of majestic flow to them. Right. Majestic. All, all right. right. Arkansas. It, no, it is. I mean, I, I, I really like the way that you presented Bangkok. And down Thank to you. the details of the roasted scorpions on a stick. And yes. the uh, here in Texas, we have CBD shops over the place now. But there in Bangkok, apparently you have weed, weed, and more weed shots. <laughs> it's out of control, man. <laughs> oh, I'm going. That's all there is to it. Yeah. I'm fucking going. Yeah. I'm, I'm so telling you, it's crazy. I, I don't know what happened. Um, it's it's crazy because I don't think anyone had any idea the law was going to change. Like they talked about it for years, and then just literally we woke up one day, and there were it was legal. It was weed, the, weed, and more weed. Did, we, did weed have any effect on this movie? <laughs> oh no, no, no! I think that would have. Had, <laughs> I think it would have affected it in a in a in a very bad way. Um, we we had to move fast, and 
we had to move very fast and to a lot of critical thinking um, on, on our feet all the time. So that wouldn't have been the choice of drug if we had. All right. So we've got a couple of comments in the chats that are worthy. Arkansas says that Mickey Mouse thing on your top shelf looks awesome. What is that oh, up there you. on your top shelf there? That is a popcorn canister. Like you get okay. at the, the movies, like one of the memorabilia or whatever. So like, oh, that's dope. I have, I have a thing um, where every time I go to the movie theater and I see, I've got to buy whatever popcorn uh, memorabilia yeah. it is or whatever, sure. or the, the special bucket or whatever. Right. I, this is a thing I do. Anytime I go, I, I always make sure I buy one. So that is one I got a couple days ago. It's actually, so it's supposed to be film reels, and then it oh. actually has a projector that actually projects a light and like a bunch of clips from uh, Disney movies in it, like on your wall wow. or something. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's neat. Talk about top shelf popcorn. <laughs> yeah. All right. So also here in the chats, this is my brother David Warden. He's breaking his cherry here tonight. I've never seen him in the chats before. So thank you for watching the cool. podcast, David. Thanks for being in the chats. And he tells you. Good one. Interesting dialogue. Way to go, Joshua. Thank you. Thanks, David. Good to meet you. <laughs> Do you ever get tired about talking about your films or your productions or anything like that? Or is it always exciting? Um, I mean, I guess, no. I mean, I, I, I love it. It's what I do. Um, it's, 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 you know, what I've always wanted to do. So I'm, I'm, I can, you know, I'm thankful and I can say that I'm living the dream that I wanted to, wanted to. So, um, you know, I have a lot to be thankful for. So like, I'm, I'm not taking, you know, I'm doing my best to not take any of the moments for granted. So, yeah. um, I love, I I'm love curious to, from uh, John and also from Van, what are your thoughts on remakes? Remakes. Uh, so man, it's a good one. Yeah. That's a really good question. And, I have an opinion, but then we're also doing a remake right now for for, for a studio here in Thailand. Um, but the thing is, I was never I, I don't know the movie. It's just it's a it's a Thai movie remake that, that we're doing um, that one of our uh, in-house directors is directing. Um, and so. I guess. I mean, I don't have any problem with anyone doing a remake. I think people that love those films are the ones that will have issues and problems and rightfully so, right? Someone made a piece of cinema for you to have an opinion about, like, you should still continue to carry that opinion and, um, you know, voice your opinion on what you like and don't like, um, you know, the masses will, will determine what's successful, you know, at the box yeah. office. So and I think remakes come in different moments of people's lives. I've seen movies that were remakes that I didn't know that were remakes before. Yeah, exactly. And I've fallen in love with the one that I watched. And then I'd go back and watch the original. I'm like, okay, well, would I have enjoyed this? Like I try yeah. to enjoy it as its own entity. Sure. Well, see, hey, no, the I, reason that I bring it up is because I think there really should be a remake of Near Dark. And I think Van Quattro should play the Lance Hendrickson role. Oh. I don't remember. Right. You, got that, you got that man? <laughs> I did. I worked with him actually on a Millennium uh, TV show. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we worked real closely on an episode of that. Hmm. Cool. That's so cool. You so know, remakes really are interesting because it's like, you know, in theater, people do plays all the time and it's being done across town. I mean, you can have yeah. five productions of Oklahoma in one place. And right. And they're all different. Good point. Good but point. it seems like in cinema, it's it's different. I don't know. It can land really badly, in, in my opinion. Some remakes just don't land well, um, and you have to wonder what they were going for when they did them. You know? Yeah, because it, it plays. I guess plays would it be across the board, but plays aren't being filmed like I guess a movie would be filmed. So everybody would have their own take on their preference of cinematography on their music scores on how they present the emotions of the movie or how they sure. create that their own little movie magic because they want to be different but they don't mm -hmm. want to be too different but then it's like right. if i'm not different enough are people really going to enjoy this well and it depends on the artist and are they going to add something to the to the mix mm -hmm. um, that's going to be unique yeah otherwise uh, a lot of times they're just cash grabs to me that's where I look at it. Probably. Yeah. Or maybe they thought yeah. that the movie, when 
I watched a movie 20 years ago. Maybe if I did a remake, I wanted to recapture my own take on it and maybe make that magical for somebody else. That's 20 years Absolutely. later because they might that's have not. Yeah. And, and plus, uh, America has done a lot of uh, remakes of foreign films, you know, from Asia, like Infernal Affairs became The Departed and, you know, exactly. uh, Juwan became The Grudge. Uh, do Does Thailand remake American movies and make them in their own image? No, that's not really a thing. Not that I've seen. Um, it's very it's very popular for other countries in the region to remake Thai films, though. Thai, Thai films are um, like the actual Thai language film industry right that is um pretty popular in the region so like thai films will do very very well in other countries like uh, i think china's biggest film two years ago was a thai film like their biggest box office film was a thai film oh wow um, original yeah, content so say what yeah yeah <laughs> exactly it's it's uh yeah it's it's a very unique place um no Th thailand's a leader definitely in cinema um so i would say that like people are remaking thai films in the region um, so it'd be like Indonesia's remaking a Thai movie that did really good, or you know Malaysia might something like that. So, yeah. oh, remakes. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, we didn't really talk about Luis Mandolin uh, very much. Um, you know, we kind of talked about his character, but not about his. Like, how did you? How did he end up on your movie? Nico and him are great friends. So he he's also a director, and Nico's shot uh, a few movies for him. Uh, so, you know, they, we, we, we wrote the part with Luis in mind. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so Nico he, is the writer and Joshua's partner in crime. Exactly. 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 Yeah. But that's how Luis came in. Um, and he was, he was the right part. He's the right guy for the part for sure. Uh, he's great to work with. It gives you tons of collaboration, tons of, uh, he has great ideas behind and in front of camera. So. Do you ever yeah. get starstruck? And like you just have to bring it back in, pretend um, that you're not just geeking out over somebody. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I don't know. Like we don't. Um, I think by the time when you're when you're working with someone for so long, you know, like it's now become it's it's it's, it's a team more than it is like, you know, I'm with that person. You know, so like it's definitely more a team effort um, and. I think on a film set, you just have so much going on and so much to focus on. Like you have to keep just looking forward, you know? There's no time to geek out. Exactly. That's that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. What about the reverse? Did anybody come on set and be like, yeah, I'm awesome. And then uh, eventually got humbled. And by the end of it, they were like, I'm your f -f -f friend. <laughs> I, I, we, we just try not to hire those people. <laughs> we try never to, have to bring them on. <laughs> So, Dave, you're never going on there. Just FYI. No, no, no. You guys are all on I'm kidding. Plane, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I ain't getting on plane you. shit. I love you, Dave. <laughs> all right. Uh, what about some of the other scenes? Like, uh, one of the things, it's just crazy things that I think about, was the rain scene. Yeah. Uh, did you create the rain, or did y'all take advantage of the opportunity, the natural opportunity? He ran rain? out in the truck. Yeah. No, it was, it was all set up. It's all so we we brought in rain towers for that. Um, they're just basically like a uh, what is it? It's like a garden spigot, you know, garden yeah. spigot at the end of a of a pipe tower of some sort, right? So you just crazy. Uh, Seems like more there. rain than that. Yeah, no, I mean it's well, we have a big water truck, right? Like you yeah. you'd have like a counter county fire department water, water truck right come out and that, yeah. that's, that's supplying all the the water for your rain the whole time so <laughs> and you and you turn it off between scenes right you don't right. it's completely running so yeah. you're rehearsing with the actors while it's not raining and then you step back they roll or they start the rain you roll cameras shoot it and then after they cut the water so like you're not in the rain the whole time yeah. and so what about the lighting during that scene because the lighting is like pretty fucking yeah. awesome Thank you. Um, that's all Nico. Um, of course, it's it's set far off. So it's away from the water. So they, they can't reach it. You know, it's probably another 20, 30 yards of back. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can tell that that's what creates that effect. I would love yeah. to watch a little gif of um, what you see in the movies. And it's like this beautiful rain. And then yeah. what you see behind the scenes. And it's just yeah. 100 hours. Yeah. 
exactly. It's that's that's how it's the done. Movie magic. <laughs> movie magic. Were there any natural disasters that interrupted the the shooting? Natural disasters like uh, like an earthquake, <laughs> hurricanes, tsunami. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, there was just naturally we ran into challenges, little mini disasters all over the place. But um, no, I don't think there was anything major. We we did a pretty good job planning it. Um, I think the biggest thing is just going into overtime. You know, more than you you wanted. So the so. hand of God stayed out of your way. Good. Yeah. For the most part. At yeah. least for a minute. What about yeah. improvised? How much of the movie is improvised? Not much. Not much at all. Um, yeah, not much at all. It's pretty much all completely you get, scripted out. Do you get mad if they go off script? Um, <laughs> no, no, because the, you really, so you really don't run into the problem because <laughs> you're discussing and rehearsing and figuring it out beforehand. <laughs> And then once you guys have all got the plan of how it's going to work out, then you roll cameras. And if they're doing it different than the plan that you went over, then yeah, of course that's irritating. But um, if they do something cool, then you know, and you like it and you keep it, then later you have to thank them. You know, the actors, of course. Um, but uh, you know, I think you kind of you, you need to get that rhythm with them, so you know what's going on, and you guys figure out how you best work together and. You know, my my whole thing is um, my 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 whole secret. Whenever I'm I'm working with an actor and fan, you you probably heard me do this a few times. Is like, that's great. All right, let's try it. Let's try it another way. You know, so like you always you 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 compliment and then you say that's great. Let's try it this other way, right? So that's how you're trying to get another take essentially out of it. Um, that's yeah. just like a little thing for directors to to use. So. Um, so that way don't you tell have, people they did a bad job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you scream into a pillow at the end of the day? Um, I, I didn't have time, man. As soon as I was next to the pillow, I was asleep, man. Like during that process. Um, I think now I need to go do it and get it, get it out <laughs> a year and a half later. So scream right here. All you want. What about happy accidents? Were there things where you had something, you know, lined up and it ended up better than what you were expecting? happy accidents um yeah i mean i i think that i feel like the whole process of making a movie is very similar to that and that sounds really weird but what you're Make trying sense. to do so we didn't storyboard the whole thing after right so i knew the location we were going to be in i knew the actors we'd rehearse the lines i knew what props and wardrobe colors we have chosen and the first time I'm seeing it together is on set. So my whole thing was lining everything up and then we show up to set and and I just have like the preconceived notion that it's gonna work together. Um, and so that's that's kind of like, I would say like, they're they're not accidents, but they're like directed accidents in that way, right? So like, you're, you're just like trying to line up all the right moving parts, put everyone together, put them in the correct space and hope and, 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 and then know that it's gonna work together. Um, and then sometimes it doesn't. And, uh, you know, you, you, you work with what you get and you have, you have to be comfortable to live with what you get at the end of the day. You must be a very patient person because I'm not going to lie. If things wouldn't work out exactly in my mind, if I was doing the film, yeah, I probably lose it a little bit. I mean, maybe not on people <laughs> inside here and sure. in here. She's punched me multiple times. It's, uh, it's taking me it's taking me 15 years to get to this point oh God. <laughs> so i've had 15 what? years of practice in the industry and now now i directed my first film and uh you know so i, can I wouldn't barely say i was patient my three but tried to be <laughs> my three bandmates it's like hurting cats i can't even respond to a text message sometimes just one text message i don't i can't imagine like a hundred and something people in a day it's all your you prep as much as you can and you got to have good people that can organize for you. Um, whenever I'm shooting, what means I, more I, to you, a bigger yeah. budget or a group of people that all get along? Um, both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need both. You need. That's you what need I'm gonna say. They're getting paid. You pay the real. people that get along. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You need both. Um, yeah. 
Looky here, Ville Girl's in the house. Hi, Ville Girl. Hope you enjoy Joshua Dixon here and Van Quattro. Ville Girl is one of our original viewers. Awesome. Yep. Oh, man. That sounds like a lot of chaos and fun. I'm really glad that it that is. movie came together. It was, it was really good. Minus my no subtitles, which will be rectified. But Yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure we, we set you up with that. Already is, and you can find Ariel. Her band is against all odds, and so you can get her email multiple cool. places if you just look up against all odds. Okay. And we'll we'll play her song uh, at the end of the show, so you'll hear that song. Awesome. Her one, her one magical song. Would you be willing to come back to Texas to film a, mo a movie? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd, I'd love to, to come back and shoot there. I'd love to come back there and shoot there. Dave, let's Is there a part of Texas you'd like to film in? I mean, I think it all comes down to the story, what we're trying to, um, trying to do. I mean, it, it'd be great to, to, to go back home to Fort Worth, man. I mean, you know, it's all, we're all of my friends and everyone are at, so it'd be really cool to go there and work. Um, it'd know, be difficult to bring your crew out. though. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have to hire local, of course. We just bring a few key players. Yeah. Well, Van Quattro, what do you think it would be about? Not going. Sorry. Go ahead, David. All right, all right. You come back to Texas. Uh, you're you're fresh off of this gigantic hit that's international, and so you want to film your next movie in Texas. What's it going to be about? <laughs> Man, uh, I, I, goodness, I don't know. I would love to do a Western. I've always, space, I, I love Westerns. Yeah. Space, Dude, we have been in dire need of a good Western. Seriously. Yeah. I'd love to do a Western. I, I, space I, I Cowboys. Like, 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 th like 310 to Yuma or even like a Silverado. Yeah. I love 310 to Yuma. Um, yeah, I would love to do. I'd love to do a you know an old style western. You've got the train robbery and and all that. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun. That's 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 kind of what I grew up on. You know, my dad was always uh, always had westerns playing, so they got to have a special place. Do y'all remember this story? I forget his name. It was uh, a train robber. They named uh, straight after him in Waco area. Um, Oh my Atlanta! I just listened to a podcast over this, and this would be a great little film to do. Hold, please. Keep discussing. I'm going to figure this out. Ariel's riveting. Ariel, just keyboard. riveting. I am now very excited that my brain has totally forgotten all the information that it's collected. Sam over Bass here. and his train. Sam Bass, name. thank you. <laughs> Have y'all heard of Sam Bass? Nope, I'm not. Okay, Western, right there. <laughs> All right, I'm not caught up on him. my outlaws, so I need there's to, a uh, there's a whole podcast. It's a without the cattle or yeah. All right, have you heard of it before? It sounds sounds super Texan. Everything but the <laughs> cattle, and they go they talk about. Yeah. All these people, Western. It's great. Y'all should listen to the podcast. But it is about Sam Bass, and that'd be a really good one because he was kind of like. Dude, I would love to see a, a limited series about Hell's Cat Baker, Highway 81, where it was just Ooh. gambling and prostitution and gunfights all throughout yeah. the late 1800s, early 1900s. It sounded like a fascinating time that would definitely lend itself to like some Yellowstone, Tulsa type stuff. You familiar with that whole thing, Hell's Half Acre? I'm not, no. Yeah, look it up if you get a chance. I mean, if you're looking to come to Texas and do a Western, there's two fantastic ideas. Hell's Anybody hell. else who wants to submit ideas, put it in the chats. It's all crime, no cattle. Yeah. That's and the We'll be the that. executive producers. Van Quattro, do you have a YouTube channel that we can share in the chats? No. Okay, so everybody can find Van Quattro on uh, Facebook, but he probably doesn't want you to bug him, but uh, he's, on, he's on Facebook. You can follow him there and at least keep up with him, right? Yeah, that'll work. Or Instagram. All right, Facebook and Instagram. That's where, Do you have a website? No. Okay. 
What do you think I am, a business? <laughs> <laughs> so acting. Yeah. Right. No, the Instagram is his website. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not a word. I really like this guy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, idea. Joshua Dixon, anything you want to add to the program tonight? Um, no, man, I think I think we've covered everything. Uh, we covered quite a lot. So um, just, you know, let it, uh, anyone that sees the movie, if you want to go write, rate it on IMDb, um, that'd be fantastic. I love reading reviews and what people think. OK, um, you know, and it always helps um, we, help us get us to, to the we next We have project. not covered everything. Yeah. Oh, Joshua no, Dixon that? and Mr. Van Quattro, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, that, the famous question. You go, Josh. <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, I, I'd like to be remembered for the movies, of course, um, that I made, and then also, you know, the the, the businesses that I built. So, um, yeah, those are the two things. Um, you know, and of course, my my wife and family are are very dear to me as well. So um yeah those those three things i think are the things well martin well, Brandon anyway, sir. apocalypse now he said it walked on the edge of a razor blade and survived <laughs> that's what i want to be known for oh my wow gosh, that's funny as an artist i want to yeah, be known yeah, as an yeah. artist and somebody that uh, was in pursuit of the truth i love that both answers very very good i love that Jinx. Awesome. Yeah, your mama. Pour, pour, pour your heart out. <laughs> and, you know, pour your heart out. That's what it's all about. And uh, you did that, man. Really. I said Thank it before, you. but I'm going to say it again. The movie is excellent, Joshua. Van Quattro, your, your acting is superb. You played the role to a T. I just don't see how you could have found better actors for those roles. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. This was wonderful. I love you guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you so yeah, much. Thanks for having us. Was... It's good. It's good to see you again, Van. Yeah, you too. Good yeah, luck man. with everything, man. I'm glad things are going well for you. Truly. Thanks, man. I'm 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 looking out for you on the TV too. So oh, yeah, keep looking. Y'all <laughs> be safe. Get some sleep. <laughs> yes, rest. All right. I'm sure Josh has got to go to work now. Okay, Joshua, yeah. you, uh, <laughs> you know where you can come and just hang out and not have to be all, you know, serious and all business. Yeah, you want to come back and talk about any music or any Concerts. Yep. You got it. Okay, we're going to talk about some concerts. So, Joshua, enjoy the rest of your uh, day there in Thanks, bro. Bangkok, Thailand. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Ben. Y'all were awesome. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Meet you all. all the best. Weekly concert calendar. Weekly concert calendar. Weekly concert calendar. All in 10 Dallas Fort Worth. Surrounding Aries. Aries. Get your asses out. And that fucking fun. That's a fucking fun. Man, I am so happy it still says Aries. I keep thinking you're going to change it, and you still keep it, and I love it. I just get occupied doing other shit, you know. I've been having too much fun with this AI music stuff. I ain't going to lie. Well, stay occupied. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I'm totally stoked. I got like 30 or 40 sound takes or sound bites of Ariel that I'm making into a song this weekend. I'm very stoked about that. Wow, okay, cool. can you send me those sound bites? I'm gonna make my own. Uh, no. And we'll compare and contrast. Whose is better? Hi, everybody. Metal welcome Mike. Metal Mike, my boy. How are you guys doing today? Tonight. Super dope. Look at that. Better now. We just did one of the coolest interviews of the, you know, the whole time of Blow Your Brains Out. Ricky, Ariel, y'all fucking rock that shit tonight. I'm not going to lie. Did you hear he said I had good questions? <laughs> he did, yeah. 
Well, keep in mind, dude. I've both watched, y'all I've fucking watched, kill that shit, man. Well, I've watched a lot of his interviews where he's, you know, has to not has to, but just answers all the typical stuff. And so my goal was to do something that was unique and different. That he and I, I believe that he probably thought this was refreshing. <laughs> you know, I probably should actually, have watched those interviews so I didn't ask any of those questions. You didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. I mean, we had to ask a couple. That's what I did up front. I asked a couple of those questions to kind of get them out of the way in a sense. But they were important questions. You know, how do you get from Fort Worth to Bangkok? But that's also why he was short with his answers. You know, I don't know if you noticed that, but he was short with those answers because he's already answered those questions on four other interviews in the last uh, month. I generally always have weird questions for people, so it's never an issue on my end. But uh, the one about the tattoos, oh, man. That yeah. guy, I mean, I, I was like, those have to be real. I sat there during the movie, and I looked at my husband and go, those are all real. Still um, real. Did Jeff have any questions that we missed? Oh, I, we had, I had written all of them down, so I had already asked all of them. Well, you did kick ass. Thank you, Ariel. I love talking about movies. Both y'all did. Things. You did too, David Jarvis. Thank you very much, man. Well, Dude, I'll be honest. Like there would there would be like Claire for about thirty seconds, and then Ariel would start buffering, and sound would go off. And then Ricky, you would start buffering, and it would go off. And then all sound would go off. And then all y'all combined together to be like a chorus of the Micro Machines guy, just for like like five seconds. And I was like. Was there a question, or did Cthulhu just incorporate my brain? Uh, it was the latter. It you know, crazy. Been. I was having all kinds of intermittent stuff, too, while y'all were doing the podcast, because I was trying to test out our sound, and all I was getting was, ah, 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 ah. I was like, what is going on with the signal? That's how we usually sound. We were actually doing that. It wasn't just you. Ah. Ah, la, la, la. Ah. Looks like you brought the militia tonight, Metal Mike. Hell Yeah. Way to rock. It's crapped up. Let's go. Um, I, think, I, I genuinely think there's an internet connection problem going across there's gotta the DSW area because um, my office in Rockwall since last week, there's been a lot of issues. My internet here at home, there's been a lot of issues. And we have like the top notch that you can have because my husband needs the internet to work for his job. Right. Um, so. Yeah, I was getting Here's the Metal Mike links right here. Thank you, Arkansas. Metal Mike, Hell the yeah. rapper. And then also Descent, Descent Metal, Descent Metal Band. Band. Thank you, Arkansas. You are the best, babe. You are a decent. Decent. Uh, 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 how and, did your... and something that I wasn't able to point out, but I was going to say, Toby Keith, since he died, because he died – the day of our last uh, show, like a week ago, right? Okay, yep. he has made history. He is the first artist with nine of the top ten songs on country sales chart. No other artist has ever done that. Not Willie Nelson, not Taylor Swift, not even uh, Kenny Rogers when he died. Toby Keith owns nine of the top ten slots on country right now. Yeah, but that was before he died, was it not? No, right it's this now, week because, because he died. Because he died, people are like, I'm going to jam that shit. Well, I, I like yeah, him as yeah. a person. I don't even know his music, but I've watched a couple of interviews, like Sammy Hagar interviewed him, and uh, I like him as a person. I can't drop 55. That's my guy right there. I love Sammy. That's Sammy. But no, it's stuff like Red Solo Cup and uh, Beer for My Horses and oh, I'm not as good as I once was. And I'm not how do you like me now? Yeah, somehow I'm able to avoid most all of that. <laughs> Red Solo Cup. I feel you whoop. Let's have a party. Let's have a party. I'm having a party. Okay, let's let's talk about bands. Let's talk about music, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't Sorry, have that much to talk about, so let's get right into it, man. It's this Sunday. Um, it's Sunday. I know that uh, uh, Warhog is playing this weekend, so I want to make sure we talk about that. Warhog is playing at Trees, right? They yeah. are. They're playing. They're opening up for uh, Crypta. We've got that here somewhere. We do have that. 
That one's well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just go through all these really quick. Some of them are old. So if I see it that they're old, I'll just skip on to the next one. But yeah, bro, I'm really excited about this show Sunday. Metal uh, yeah, Mike. I don't, I don't get to get out that much. Introduce glad, this one, sir. I'm glad you're getting out on this one. This is our post St. Valentine's Day massacre headlining show, our very first headlining show. Um, it's going to be at Growl Records. Uh, it's going to be like a record store takeover. It's going to be fucking punk rock and metal and brutal as fuck. And dope. And hopefully we'll be a bunch of people that are drunk there and drunk early. It's going to be an early show. We play at 930. We're the headliner, so it'll be over by 10. Okay, that's important. Yeah, I, I thought y'all were playing a little earlier, but still uh, over by 10. So anybody yep. that has to work the next day, David Jarvis. No excuses. Get home safe. You'll be there in time. If 10 o'clock's your curfew, you need a different job the next day. <laughs> uh, then don't be a dental hygienist. <laughs> oh, how do you do that job? I had a patient really wear me out yesterday. I'm so emotionally not here and together. But uh, we're not we're not the, we're not the only good band on the bill. There's there's a bunch of killer bands I'm I'm excited to check out. You know, Swarm. Local. Um, they've been advertising the fuck out of this show, man. I, I wish I had their Facebook skills. Yeah, Swarm is good about promoting. We haven't had them on the show yet. Uh, we threatened to have them on like last year, and it just never happened. And I hadn't got back to them. We've been moving on to movie stars. Yeah. Movie on to movie stars. <laughs> and, and comedians. I've got yeah. a uh, yeah. comedian. Me and Rick here going to Hollywood. That's right. When you hey, said and comedians, it. I thought you meant me, and I got really excited, but I realized you meant actual comedians. <laughs> we, uh, we have a comedian popping on with us next week for, you know, just a few minutes. He can stay on as long as he wants, but he's going to come on and make us laugh for a few minutes. And uh, he is, in my opinion, Dallas-Fort Worth area's hottest rising comedian right now as we speak. So, uh, and he's funny. That's important. The guy's actually funny. I hope so I feel funny. fucking honored to have him on. Corpse Ooh. Fire. We played with Corpse oh, Fire. Dude, it's going to be fucking awesome. Oh, and I'm sorry to enter, enter with some bad news, but from what I understand, Katy Perry will not be coming back to American Idol next season. I'm sorry, Ariel. Oh, she's going to get a new haircut. Why do I care about Katy Perry? Because uh, songs. Because music she makes oh. and judges. I'm not going to lie. I don't really listen to her stuff. Lives. Yeah. Lives she decides. I love Kelly Clarkson. She's my favorite. We're going to be best friends. Can we get Kelly Clarkson on this show? Sure. I would love to have Kelly Clarkson on the show. I will cry the entire time. Let me tell you something about Kelly Clarkson is that I was hired to paint her house. She uh, bought a house out here in South Mansfield. And so I, you know, I, I met her, walked through the job. I, I used to, I'm an artist, if y'all don't know. And I used to specialize in this thing called faux finishes and hand trial textures. So I was a pretty fucking badass painter at one time before the economy went. <laughs> and so, yeah, Kelly Clarkson actually called to get her house painted. So we did like special shit in every room. I mean, every room, right? Yeah. So we were there for about uh, six weeks doing the whole three-story house, this old 100-year-old 100, 100 house out here in the middle of the country in Mansfield. And uh, so during that six-week time period, Ariel, uh, that's when Since You've Been Gone uh, yeah. went like platinum or whatever happened with it. Oh, she won a Grammy. She won a Grammy yeah. on the Grammys while we were there painting her house. And it was one of the weirdest I, I love how she picked everybody but American Idol on that one. I love that. Well, <laughs> it's one of the weirdest experiences, y'all, in the sense that before that, we were like all chummy, dude. She was just so normal and was so appreciative of my artistic skills and painting her house and everything. And then after that, she just kind of disappeared. We didn't see her much anymore after that. And when we did, she was just moving through and gone, right? So after I, and and I totally had her permission to take pictures because that's what I do. Oh man, I'm gonna get some good pictures of all of this, you know. And you know, I, that's what I do is I document my commitment to excellence to help me grow my business. 
And so uh, a few months later, I got a letter from a letter, a fax, an email, a phone call, you know, all at the same time from her attorney. Cease and desist. You have to remove those pictures off of the website. Damn. Yeah. And I called him and said, dude, you don't have to be a fucking dick about it. You know, I get the concept that you throw everything at me, including the kitchen sink, thinking that I'll be so afraid and shit in my pants, I'll take it down. You know, I, I took the pictures and posted them because Kelly Clarkson was cool enough to give me permission to do it. All she really needed to do was call me back and say, hey, Rick, things have changed. If you don't mind, take those pictures down. I'd have been, yeah, totally cool. Can you just take her name off those pictures and no one would ever know that was her house? Probably no, the name. It was considered a security issue. Um, yeah, when, when you become famous, there's this thing called security. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, if her name's not on it, it's just some work you've done somewhere. No, nah, no. Nah, they, they weren't going to go for that. But I did give the guy a hard time. I didn't take him down immediately. What I told him is I said, you know, I get it that, you know, she's really busy right now. But you, in her place... You know, when you ask me nicely to take them down, I'll take them down. <laughs> and so finally, I think it was the next day he called and was really nice. And we had a conversation. I was like, thank you. That's how you do it. You know, I'll take them down. If any of y'all are up to speed on the comic cons, if y'all ever come across Katie from the paranormal activity movies, I went to high school with her, so if she ever does any appearances locally, let me know. I will get in that line. I will pretend, you know, to be one of douchebags. Oh, God. Oh, it was so scary. And uh, I'll just be like, hey, uh, want to come on the podcast sometime? Like, why'd you bring Who up me? Katie? I, I, I want to say her name is Katie, Katie Hiddleston. You're going to have to know her name if you're going to invite her onto the podcast first. <laughs> I went to high school with her. Like I, I had classes with her, but we didn't like hang out. What yeah. was her name then? I didn't hang out with her. Well, how do you know you went to high school with her then? What if it was a totally <laughs> could have been? I'm pretty sure her name is Katie. I'm pretty sure her name is Katie Hiddleston. She didn't smoke. I smoked, so we didn't hang out. Same face. Katie Lynn. Uh, no. Pull that yearbook out. Well, let me rub it into Ariel a little more. I did hang out with Kelly Clarkson. I'm telling you, she was just as cool as she could be and just as normal as the rest of us were. We are know? going to be best friends, and I think she sings everyone's songs better than them, and I really want her to sing my song Cold just so I could, like, oh, wow. die. I'll just die. If I ever meet her, all, all I'll do is cry in front of her because I think I'm vocally, I don't know really anything about her. I know she loves sunflowers and that's pretty much it. But mm -hmm. uh, I think she's the best vocalist I've ever heard. Better than Not, Carrie like, Underwood? Oh my God. Way better than Carrie. Not that Carrie okay. Underwood isn't good. She's Kelly's amazing. got pipes. Kelly's got range and Kelly's got runs. She's got it all, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Who's the best female vocalist of all time? I think she just said it. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> I'm going to go Janet here. Jackson. Janet's pretty good. I'm not saying she's not. Well, speaking of country, she's economical. Hits, heard new Beyonce hit uh, Texas Two Step. What? Oh, oh yeah, Beyonce. Taylor. Taylor's pretty good. Released. Beyonce released a couple of country songs. One's called the Texas Two Step. Yes, what? Beyonce. What? But she can't like actually hit the correct notes when she's singing the yeah. music that she actually wants to she sing. Couldn't even auto tune that shit enough, huh? Damn. So they put a country accent on the auto tune. <laughs> Dude, their their auto tune is a million dollar product. It can do any fucking thing they want it to do. For sure. <clears throat> That's how I think of this AI. I've been playing around in this AI so much. I'm just like, dude, you know, this is a freeware thing. I mean, I pay 20 bucks a month for my extra tokens. Could you imagine? Bro, you've been growing leaps and bounds with what you've been doing online, bro. Seriously, you've been doing a yeah. great fucking job. 
It's Thank not him. You. It's the AI. It's the AI. Hey, it's the AI. Me. It is me. Wait, it is me. All right. Thank you, AI Ricky. <laughs> You're like an AI well, DJ. You press well, play. The, the, the point, though, was, is, dude, can you imagine if you had a million-dollar AI device? I mean, dude, I'm telling you, these people have been ai for 10 years now at least, and we just you didn't know. You don't have to imagine. Just turn on the radio. Turn on the radio. That's my point. They've been ai these bands for years, dude, and nobody, no, nobody caught on. We all knew something was up. But it's that's my AI yeah, holograms. I, yeah, oh, fuck it. I was just turned on to the idea that people don't actually listen to music because they like the music, but actually because they're afraid of being that person that doesn't listen to that music. And that's just sad. <laughs> so what you're saying is I need to scare people into listening to my stuff. Trick people into listening. No, no, no. no. What I'm it. saying is you need to stab some people on the buses that I know that you're watching. <laughs> I like getting stabbed. Well, fortunately, favorite. Ariel, everybody loves your song "Cold," and I mean Yay. everybody. That makes me very happy because <laughs> I love. I Bill love Girl Freddie. says Ann Wilson is the best female vocalist. That's a uh, singer for Dude, heart. Dude, Ann Wilson, fucking Ann a. Wilson, she's got some Aguilera, Christina Aguilar. Christina Aguilera, some pops. Nobody Michael likes Charles, Charles. that's Moonspell, right? Hey, Michael Charles, Charles are you Moonspell? Thank you for being here tonight. Moonfallen. Celine Dion? Moonfallen. Yeah. All very great artists, Adele. all very great vocals. Still not as good as Kelly Clarkson. Adele? Is that what I said? Mic drop. Now, locally, I got to give props to Ariel and Shade. Those are my two favorite female vocalists locally. Thank you. Both of which you can come out and enjoy next March the 2nd. It's a free show. Yeah. So you can spend your money on band merch or whiskey. There you go. Shut up and finish your whiskey, guys. Spend money on whiskey and spill it on your band merch. <laughs> the Did I ever tell you all what happened at Six Springs? And nobody knows. And I hope nobody else finds out. Oh, my God. What happened? Hello. And one of the shows that we were at, some, my husband bought me a shot for um, our the, our last song was Finish Your Whiskey. And he put it on the uh, main speaker. Yeah, just be glad he didn't put it on the Marshall head. It disappeared. And I thought somebody took it. And I watched the video. It fell off. It just slowly goes. Doo, 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 doo. And that shot glass is still there to this day. Nobody take it out. It is like a permanent... Every time I go back, I got to make sure that it's still there. You can hear a slight, subtle tinge of shot glass in the in the subs. And it was just funny, just right off. And you can watch it in one of the videos too, our live stream. Pretty cool. Where's it at? Oh, on your Facebook or on your YouTube? It's on YouTube. <laughs> All right, we'll have to go find that and show it on one of the next episodes. The evidence mm -hmm. locker. Evidence. Yeah, my, my brother did that, but he put it on his uh, uh, Marshall, and it was a beer, and oh, it no. didn't it didn't spill uh, after the show ended. The show had just ended, so the Marshall was hot, and uh, he went to grab it or something, knocked over the beer. It literally poured inside of his Marshall head, oh, which man. was brand new. Yeah, put him out of commission. He didn't have a fucking amp to play through anymore. And he literally quit playing music and uh, joined the Navy. Because of one beer. And in, 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 you know, in the short of it, yep. All it takes is one spilled beer. Don't cry over spilled milk. Cry over spilled beer. No. <laughs> on, a Marshall, on a brand new Marshall head. Damn, I'd cry. Yeah, he's still crying a little bit. All right, what's our other show we got? Well, give me just a second because I'm really close. I have to be really close to this Kelly Clarkson picture. I know I've got a few of them, you know, dispersed here and there, but um, I don't really know where all of them are, but I've got one with stripes. Like so uh, did anybody hear about the gigantic shooting because the Chiefs won? What? What shooting? 
How gigantic was it? Yeah, there was a the uh, froze uh, in the backyard. Yeah, I heard about that. Okay, what? so at, at least one person no. was killed and more than 20 were injured in a shooting during the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl rally. Uh, last I heard, 22 injured and two dead. Um, you know, Where? this is really not how one in Kansas City. Uh, this is not exactly how people should celebrate a victory of a sport that was rigged in the first place. <laughs> that's not how you celebrate any kind of victory that's how you celebrate a loss and more right. loss happy and valentine's blood. day to us all yep bloody valentine man all right i'm gonna give up so, yeah, this show right here is going to be a kick-ass show. I hope everybody's making plans, even if you're from Arkansas or out of town. I know Mike, uh, he was talking about being there for sure and bringing some people from out of town, if I remember right. So, Mike, thank you very much for all your support for our show coming up. We're really excited about it. Uh, this is another show with Vane and uh, Descent, right? Isn't Descent on this show? No, nope, this, is, this is Torch Fest. This is a different Torch show. Fest. What's the date on it? Um, it's down at the bottom, hold please. Yeah, I got to fix this graphic. Um, I'm pretty sure Vane is playing. February 11th had already passed. Where? Pretty sure Vane is playing. Yeah, that was, that was last weekend. That's right. Okay, cool. Well, shout out to Torch. Thanks for all the shows you're doing, bro. We'll see you Sunday. For sure. Sunday. Sunday. Cro-Mag, Snafu, and Hitting Hitting Wood. So that's this weekend at Cheap Steaks. Where they have cheap steaks. Reno's. Another Torch Fest. Ugly yeah. Mustard. This is in April 27th. Crazy show. Yours truly, Metal Mike, on the lights. Actually, uh, I won't be doing lights for Ugly Mustard. Our good buddy Dale Bridges will be doing lights for Ugly Mustard. How oh, about fancy. that? He's more famous than me, if you ask him. Well, I don't really know him, so you're more famous than him right now. <laughs> He's been around a lot longer doing it, a lot, a lot longer than I have. That's why they asked By him. By the way, I, I know it's early and everything, but uh, April 8th, Monday, April 8th, 2024, the total solar eclipse. Uh, just a couple of the ISDs that are closing for the day. Uh, Blanco, Cherokee, Dripping Springs. There's actually a Dripping Springs ISD, you dirty motherfuckers. Uh, Kerrville, Killeen. Marble Falls, San Saba, all the way to Temple ISD. So basically all of Central Texas will be off on Monday, April 8th. So plan your highway travels accordingly because there will be a bunch of dumbass motherfuckers staring directly at the sun when you're driving. We need some special glasses. Well, anyways... Friday, February 16th, support local music. Wear yeah. your shirt. Yeah, Iron Maiden. That's artists. this weekend. Yep. They're That's pretty this dope weekend people. At Reno's. That starts this weekend off. Yeah, that's this weekend at Reno's. And then is the uh, Warhog show on Saturday? Cool. Um, I believe the Warhog show is. I thought it was Friday, but maybe it is Saturday. I think it's Friday. I, I thought it was Friday. Yeah, I think it's Friday also. Oh. We'll get to it in just a minute. Okay, we got Rogue Radio, February the 25th at Pearls, Cherokee. Shout out to Ken Martin, our sound man for our show at the Diamond Gym show. Uh, John 5, February 24th. This is coming up quick with Marty Friedman, special yes. guest. Granada. And this one's at Another tree show. Cold and orgy. Bringing it back. Who wants to have a cold orgy? Uh, it won't be cold if it's good enough orgy, right? <laughs> well, let's give a shout out to Rob DeLuca for coming on last week and helping our show just kick ass. We had a great podcast last week. Everybody go back and watch that. I hope you uh, had a good show in Mansfield. I, I think they did because there was a few people there. But uh, I my Phoenix was very excited. Like he was ready to see this band. Like he's like, I don't want to be late. I want to see the whole show. And you never know what you're going to get out of a kid. Well, oh, he no. was all in. And we went there, and they wouldn't let him in. Uh, I'm like, I'm his dad. 
uh, we have thirty dollars. It's fifteen dollars. So I was ready to pay him thirty dollars, and I'm gonna buy some merch. And they were like, "Sorry, no kids." So that Aww. happened. That but sucks. No, yeah, but takes nothing away from Rob DeLuca, man. He has been very good to us, and he's a super personal guy. Uh, I think he's one of the very few in the whole music world. Very genuine. Warhog. And it's Friday. Look at us. Right. You remembered, Mike. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be a big deal. You got a big show at Reno's and Trees this Friday. I better know or I'll be late for work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So here's the other band, Crypta. That's who they're playing with. Shades they're, of Sorrow. They're heavy as hell, Crypta is for a girl band. For a girl band. Oh, a girl man. band. No, they're they're heavy as hell for any band. That's awesome. Well, Warhog is pretty heavy too, man. So everybody get out there and have a good time with Warhog and with uh with Iron Mang and all those bands over at Reno's. Go to a couple of shows. Just throw and throw away and go back and forth. <laughs> Speaking of stone. Stone side with support from Secret of Boris. In Search of Sight, who I played with. Observer and Action Wednesday. Hey, remember when we had In Search of Sight on our show? Uh, or at yes, least I we do. had Daniel. And dude, what a great fucking band In Search of Sight is. They really are. I, I'm I'm kind of dumbfounded that someone hadn't come along already and did something to manage them. You know, you don't really get record deals anymore. You get management deals or marketing deals. And plus, there's a there's a stigma attached to Christian bands just in general. And it's like, dude, if they're amazing, uh, who cares? Oh. Wait a second, back it yeah. on up, back it oh, on up. I didn't put that band. together. They're a Christian, don't ruin it for us. Don't ruin it for us. Just let them just be a good band. Yeah, I didn't put that together, David Jarvis. Do they say I don't know how I missed it. in their lyrics? I did. I you didn't know In Search of Sight is a Christian band? Like oh, openly wow. Christian okay. Christian yeah, yeah. Band? Or just Christians in a band? I guess it's common knowledge, Mike. That's ridiculous. Anyways. Yeah. All right. So everybody go out and but hey, still a man shout, thing. Uh, shout uh, niceties. You know, with, uh, whatever, me whatever message that they're trying to send, that's cool. It's whatever. If the music is good, uh, I don't care. Man, uh, you, yeah. you could be supporting fucking, you could be doing some Palestinian fucking uh, <laughs> shit. Uh, if, it's cat if it's catchy, I'll listen to it. I mean, well, people like I, I really genuinely thought we have moved past the whole Christian rock genre. I didn't know any bands were calling themselves Christian anymore. I just think it's a contradiction. Like, I'll punch you in the face for Jesus because I love you. What? <laughs> the fuck is what is no? Bro, the bands that I listen to and work with, like O Sleeper and Bell Epic, and that's how I know Joshua Dixon. He and I made a video together for this band Bell Epic called Keeping the Innocent. Um, you know, we had the I what I consider a proper attitude, which was this fucking Christian shit sucks. Y'all are doing it all wrong. <laughs> you know? And so nobody wanted to be, you know, I mean, just calling yourself a Christian band is just uh it was a stick stigma. Yeah, way too much of a stigma, you know. So I don't get it. I thought people had moved past that. But thank you, David Jarvis, for enlightening our show. Thank you, Jarvis. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. So you still chaos. have time to uh, tomorrow to see Voivod and Prong. At Granada. Oh, and Born in Blood. And Born in Blood. Blood. I wonder if they were born in blood. Have you read your book yet? You were the book. Um, so is it a picture book? I, yo, I have ADHD. I have five. Did books they come blood? Right and I have started that book. You but started I have five books going, so it's going to be a minute before I finish. What's that, David Jarvis? Come blood. Oh, <laughs> a, yeah, come came blood. Back to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come blood. If you piss her maggot filled asshole. Wow, that's my that's my punk rock band. 
Let's All right, so that's it, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Aaron. Us. I've read the first uh, chapter, so I'm probably right there alongside with you. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to read that book. And Is Dan Franklin's right? book, and and fucking Mark Benavente's book. We've had so many fucking authors on this show, and I really need to read all their books so I can get them back on a show, so I can tell them all that they're really great writers. They're Please brilliant. do, David Jarvis, get them back. Hey, man, Bring some more. Every one of the guests have- you have booked have been fucking, you know. Have, have been great. So you you got to understand, uh, uh, you know, Ricky and Ariel, they love who they love. I love a good fucking journalist and I love a good fucking writer. So that's what I'm all about. I do too, but I like the books that I like am drawn to to read. It's the same thing with the stuff I watch on TV. You know, I don't watch TV. I don't watch movies. I watch people like there's a guy called Here's the Deal. <laughs> if you ever want to have fun, go check out Here's the Deal on YouTube. And so I, I'm fucking, you know, I, I've been educating myself since I was a kid and my education continues. And I know that these books are educational as well. But um, the books that I read are like Whitney Webb. That's the one I don't I haven't read it. But, you know, and I'm not going to buy it because I got to spend my money in more important places, unfortunately. But she's the one that wrote. uh America under blackmail about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, a uh, Jeffrey Dahmer about Jeffrey Epstein and the whole system of people that led up to Jeffrey Epstein being in the place he was in to do all that. And then the people that are still in that system today, you know, that's the shit that intrigues me. And I don't expect that that be what you or, you know, everyone else likes, but that's what I like. And so we all have our thing, man. That's part of what makes our podcast badass. It's dope. Hell yeah. Speaking of dope ass podcasts, so our Johnny TV one was a wonderful disaster. Uh oh. On, on our end. On, on our Just end. The sound didn't come through. Yeah, we couldn't figure out how to get. For some reason, the microphone was just, no matter what we did, it was just. <laughs> Yeah. And it was like, what the fuck? I had a way turned down. It sounded fine on our end. And it was just, it was going crazy. So that's what I've been doing here the past two hours, three hours before I got on this, this podcast. Is my bass player came over and we hooked up all kinds of mixers and different signal flows and whatever else trying to get. I blame Van Quattro. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking his, his awesomeness was taking up all the signal. He was chopping it, chopping it, chopping it, chopping it, chopping it, chopping it. Yeah, so we, we, we just couldn't yeah. figure out how to get a clean signal through, yeah, I read them online through to the the actual online thing so if you guys have ever had a live band on here and it sounded good let me know the secret please well if you want to test your audio you know it has to be at a time that i'm available but you know i'm available uh, especially sunday monday tuesday wednesday uh, well, we try different times, and you can come on backstage here, and I'll listen and try to see if we can figure out your audio. Yeah, we might have to do that because we tried to do that here with our own little backstage thing. But and you know, we'd walk outside on the phone and try to listen to it on the phone while we're playing it in here, and yeah. all the signal was just giving us. Eh, 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 eh. I was like, "What is going on with the signal?" No matter whose phone we used, no matter what we did, we couldn't get a clear enough signal to actually get around to testing the music, see if this music is a signal. So I don't know what the deal was, but uh, after after the the music nightmare, um, the podcast was a lot of fun. We Good, said fuck, we said fuck the music. We're just gonna hang out and chill for a minute. And I I got all the times wrong. I thought it was six p.m. our time, Woo. not 6 p.m. six p.m. their Pacific time. standard time. Which that had been made clear a little bit sooner before I believe made it, it or not. That's like a Hollywood thing that has crossed over into YouTube and Streamyard. They won't yeah. even allow you to set your videos at Central Standard Time. The only setting that you can set them at is specific time. Really? Yep. Because that. Well, again, guys, I want to get crazy. out of here. I know there's a lot of people watching that really want to go back and watch the interview with Joshua Dixon, yep. and a lot of people that want to go watch the movie, including me. I think I'm going to watch it again tonight. I'm very extremely excited about it. I want to remind everyone that we have Van Quattro coming up in March. 
Next week, we're going to have Against All Odds. Ariel's full band will be here. Hell yeah. Members of Iron Jaw will be here. And a comedian will be here. But I'm keeping it under wraps because that's how it works. Got a little surprise element. We're going to have a comedian next week. And he's one of the hottest DFW comedians going right now. If you want to see our schedule, we're booked well into April. We have another big movie star, Max Wiza, coming on in April. She's very excited to spend time together with us and have a blast with Blow Your Brains Out, uh, as well as many other guests. Dave, is there anyone else coming up that's scheduled you want to talk about? We're going to make every one of you motherfuckers regret ever saying no to Blow Your Brains Out, you sons of bitches. Uh, he sounds uh, so uh, yes. All right, so we do this every Wednesday night. Everybody be here next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Anything else, Ariel or David? Stay dope, my friends. Stay dope. Touch your penis, touch your penis my friends. Touch your penis. <laughs> I have always believed the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. I gotta bend all the way over here. Please make your voice be heard. Now I'm leaving society to move out to the country as my personal mess with Redneck. Maybe you have a different opinion than us. Maybe we're completely wrong and you are the one lone person in the world that is right. That's why you're here tonight. Eventually, me and Dave Jarvis are going to Hollywood. But guess what? Some of us are actually pretty friendly. Yeah, but most of us are fine upstanding young man. Fine upstanding young man. <laughs> the, uh, smoke weed!
Feeling so cold. That's against all odds right there. You're going to be able to catch them March the 2nd at Diamond Gems. Coming up next, we're going to play some Dank. But first, we might hear from David Jarvis. Yeah, it was very sad because there's a huge lag between when I speak and when the actual sound comes through to y'all speakers. But I was going to ask, how much does it cost for a Thailand hand job? <laughs> Damn, it sucks that your speaker was lagging. That would have been a great question. You know what? I, I didn't want to assume anything. You know, it's early over there in the eastern parts of the world. So I just uh, tried to keep it civil. And honestly, I, I would get nothing from any of y'all and then I get buffering and I get uh, fucking real quick blurbs of all everything that you said and it was just uh, whatever so I, I, I just like stayed back and it was so fucking weird dude like I literally I got the tablet in this one particular position and it's right on top of my dresser drawers but then I just move it two feet to the right on top of a stack of books where it's closer to my mouth and suddenly all y'all disappear and I get buffering signals and I can't hear any of y'all. So I don't know if it's me or whatever. So y'all are disappointed by my performance. I deeply apologize and I would love to stick my wiener in all of y'all's mouths <laughs> until y'all understand that I'm actually a good person. <laughs> a good person with a wiener. A good person with a flaccid, a fairly peach flavored wiener. And I'm willing to share because that's the kind of person that I am. And Ricky knows this. Rick, Ricky knows that I'm a good guy. You know, I, I come off as kind of, I come off as kind of a salty asshole because, you know, some things go to my liking and some things don't. But I feel like overall, I'm a fairly likable person. And if I ever do or say anything that upsets you, Ricky, or you, Ariel, I, I do apologize. I'll be honest. Th this podcast is one of the best things that I've ever been a part of in the 41 years that I've been uh, alive. And, and, and it's all because of you, Ricky, and it's all because of you, Ariel, and it's all because of the wonderful guests and the wonderful... Uh, the, the the camaraderie the that we get from from our guests and the, and the great conversations that we get that that we're able to inform people that were in the dark that now kind of have a better idea of everything that goes on in this twenty mile by twenty mile little square that we live in. <laughs> well, you balance us out very well, man. So I think we make a great team, and I'm sure that everyone else does too, because that's all they're talking about. Your penis, Dude, Van, penis uh, yeah, 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 Van Quattro and and Joshua Dixon and my penis—they're just a perfect triple threat to combat these uh, Valentine's Day blues that I know everybody has. <laughs> I love the way that y'all angled that, though. Instead of asking Josh, hey, can I be in a movie? It was like, hey, why don't you come here and make a movie? <laughs> it's a great way of saying, we'll be in your movie <laughs> without saying it. Well, I, I didn't want to give away my position, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tried to lay it out there for the music score. I was like, so how do you find someone to score your music? <laughs> oh, no, you did that brilliantly. But uh, you know what? Uh, uh, small productions like that, it makes sense. They got their own uh, soundtrack guy. They got their own cinematography guy. It's well, crazy. he's there in Thailand. Uh, but, That's what made most sense about it. But as soon as his uh, budget extends past, like, say, $2 million, uh, yeah, I could give him a song. <laughs> All right. You hear that, James Randall? You know, James is listening tonight. I mean, he's not listening right now because he's at work. He's got titties in his face. But after the show, you know, he's listening tonight. 
I'm pretty sure uh, James Randall, just like Wolfgang, just like Joshua, or just like, shut up, Dave. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Give me a break. <laughs> I doubt that, dude. You're very entertaining, man. I, uh, you know, this show wouldn't be what it is without you. And, you know, uh, it's like I was saying earlier about the movie. I believe this about all art. Art involves texture. So it, it involves opposing traits. In this case, it's personality traits. And we're not 100% opposed traits. But, you know, you have a you have your own character that you are as a human being. And I have mine and Ariel has hers. And together we perform we uh, form the perfect piece of art. Absolutely. So I'm going to go jerk off some to some Alex Tanner fucking uh, porn. All right. So love you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Suck my dick. Suck Ricky Zick. Have a great fucking week. You know where I'm at. I'm going to play some dank coming up next. Before I do, I want to say thank you to everybody in the charts, uh, charts, chats. Thank you very much, Arkansas. You are badass to be here every week as our main, really only moderator. I did notice, though, that, uh, uh, that, uh, a lot of other channels just make everybody a standard moderator. Like uh, maybe it makes them feel a little more inclusive or something. So that's something I need to get around to. I just need to make everybody a standard moderator. Right. But you're, you're our, our main moderator. Okay. So uh, anyway, thank you, Crimson. That 20 bucks is very important. You don't even know you just fed 2000 families in the Philippines. Just ask Potsky. Potsky is very good to us here at Outlaw Video TV. I've been in touch with him, and he says hi to everybody. So anyway, thank you, Shalay Ray. Really, it's so important that you were here tonight. So thank you very much, Shalay Ray, for being here. Uh, look here, I got Jack, uh, Joe Ziegler. I didn't even see Joe here tonight. Puff a Muffin was here, though. So thank you very much, Puff Muffin, for being here. Racing Stars 2013. Um it means the world to me, you know, just like you heard David saying, this podcast means so much to all of us. And um, I can only speak for myself here, but the chats, this is a very important part of any streaming broadcast. And so it just wouldn't be the same without y'all. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here in the chats. I'm looking for Mariz uh, Crimson. Thank you. Uh, Shelley Ray. Thank you. Looking for uh, Mariz. She was in here right up here. I want to give a special shout out to her. But uh, that's Potsky's friend. So Mariz, if you're listening, I can't find your uh, chat here. Just thank you very much for being here because it was very cool to see you here. And then also my brother, David, I was looking for him. I didn't see him. David, thank you very much for being a part of the broadcast tonight. That's what it's all about. There's that other $5. Uh, that's very important because my AdSense has been at 95. Now it was at 95. There it is. David Warden, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it was at 95 the other day. Uh, Michael Charles from uh, uh, Moonspell, right? Is it Moonspell? I apologize, bro. I know that uh, you had uh, logged in from the band page, too. How about this? Uh, Lawin. Lawin. Lawin Young Meter. Oh, oh, that would be, I recognize your face. I apologize for uh, being uh, uh, preoccupied and missing your chat. But happy Valentine's Day to my handsome man, Van. Night from San Antonio. So that's Van's love there. So Thank you, Law and Young Meter, for being good to Van. I think he's an amazing person. He's a phenomenal actor. I mean, him and uh, Luis Mandelar really carry that movie. I mean, their personalities, you just can't get enough, really. I mean, when when everything went down the way it went down, I was just like, uh, you know, it's it's... I could have watched those guys do some more acting. I mean, they were fucking good actors together. 
So there's Michael Charles again. And uh, so that's like really important. I think this is probably the only uh, chat that you put in here, Lauren, but thank you. That's so important that you were here. Uh, Ville Girl. Thank you very much, Ville Girl, for being here. And again, I'm uh, glad I'm spending time looking for uh, Mariz because I did not know that Lawin had left that message. So I wouldn't have found hers. And every one of these chats are extremely important to the vitality of this stream. So thank you very much. Oh, looky there. Got us a $9.99 super sticker. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over here and tell you thank you. Thank you, Arkansas. Thank you, Super Chat. Thank you for that, Super Chat. Everybody can have a good time with Arkansas. Shall go over there to her YouTube channel, Arkansas. Please go ahead and drop your chat, your uh, your YouTube channel in the chats. She plays games over there, yo, and uh, she's a lot of fun to hang out with. So y'all go over there and support her. Uh, she is our our moderator, you know, and so you can't really do a stream properly without a good moderator. And I can't believe that she's given us. 10 bucks, 9.99 like that. But yeah, I didn't finish the story. Basically, I was at 95 something on my AdSense a couple of days ago. And it doesn't update like, you know, real time or even every day. Sometimes a few days will go by and it updates. But the time does go in on the 15th. So tomorrow's the last day. So one of the things I did to try to make sure it bumped over that 100 mark because we don't get paid if we don't get a, over $100, a minimum of 100 is I pumped out three songs today. I've been making these songs in AI and I've been getting a lot of good responses from them. So I pumped out three of them today. Two of them being kind of Valentine's themed, if you will. And one is just like an EDM bump song. So it's pretty cool. Y'all go over to the Outlaw Video TV YouTube channel to listen to those songs including a song or two, two different songs that I made about Arkansas here. One song that I made about Johnny TV. Speaking of that, Johnny TV really missed you tonight. I apologize um, about the program, but the way it was set up, I just didn't, you know, nobody else was here. Even Metal Mike wasn't here. It was just us three and then uh, Van Quattro as our special uh, guest. And then Joshua Dixon. I just didn't want any distractions. And I apologize. I hope you understand because I love you dearly. I'm so thankful to be a part of your show. I'm so thankful to you to be a part of our show. But for the record, everybody, I'd ask Johnny to uh, participate in the chats until the concert calendar. And then at the time of the concert calendar to please come up on the show. But he did a show earlier today. He did his one year anniversary or two year anniversary. And so he was probably tired and uh, welcomed the night off anyway. But yeah, we definitely went over a hundred dollars on the AdSense, so I should be getting uh, about one twenty or something like that. Um, it takes it goes in tomorrow the fifteenth, and then I see it five days later or something like that. Okay, so I just wanted to take time to thank everyone in the chats. That's something that I don't really do very often because. You know, really, I want to end the show and I want people to be able to go back and listen to the interview uh, so much so that, you know, I really don't want to be playing 10 songs and stuff tonight. I'm just going to play two more. Uh, one is going to be the video that me and uh, Joshua Dixon made. I hope he doesn't mind. If he does, he'll let me know. I'll take it off. So I'm going to play it last. So we're going to hear a dank song, All My Drinking Buddies. And then after that, I'm going to play a music video that Joshua Dixon and I made together for a band called Bell Epic about 15 years ago. Thank you for everybody for being here. We'll see you next Monday. Blow your brains out every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Get it? Every Wednesday. That's it. Blow your brains out every Wednesday, 8 p.m. This is Dank. You can catch them live March the 2nd at the uh, Blow Your Brains Out free show. You see it on the screen. All my drinking buddies are in jail.
That's it. Look on the screen here. Coming up before your eyes, let your ears behold the mighty Bell Epic.